in reed comp chapter four thousand twenty one blue flame empire lord lantambo when the army of lightning thunderclap battleships arrived the blue flame empire's experts immediately came out to greet them it had to be known that the lightning thunderclap battleships were a symbol of the violet thunderclap empire so everyone here thought that the violet thunderclap empire's people had come however what greeted them was an enormous flame lotus when it appeared, those lightning thunderclap battleships instantly vanished. It's a fake. Activate the first person to react quickly roared, but Long Chen gave them no time at all. Boom. The world extermination flame lotus that had been brewing for a long time smashed down, causing the grand formation, which had just been activated, to shatter. The flame lotus then smashed into the heart of the capital. As a result, a wave of fire decimated the buildings, instantly turning this grand capital city into ruins. Even Zhu Yunwen and the others were dumbfounded. Long Chen was too vicious. They had never seen such a terrifying sight before. You sons of bitches of the Vermilion Bird Empire, how dare you? A furious roar rang out. After that, an elder in blue robes with a crown on his head charged out. The Blue Flame Empire Lord, Lan Tanba, Zhu Yunwen, and the others' nerves tensed when they saw this elder. After all, he was a three flower earth venerate. The Blue Flame Empire only had two three flower earth venerates. One of them was besieging the Vermilion Bird Empire, and the other was right in front of them. Bastards, you dared to disguise yourselves as people from the Violet Thunderclap Empire. Not one of you will leave alive. Another elder came out of the rubble and immediately charged at Long Chen. He was a double supreme divine venerate, and his face twisted with fury. He had just gathered the army here and was admonishing them. That was because just now, Wang Tianyao's master had come and transmitted Wang Tebei's words, calling for them to prepare for battle. Wang Tianyao's master had only given some simple orders, but the Blue Flame Empire was the weakest of the eight empires, so in order to express their loyalty and sincerity, they immediately summoned their forces. Soon after Wang Tianyao's master departed, Long Chen and his companions arrived. Seeing them, the soldiers were surprised to see people from the Violet Thunderclap Empire returning so soon. However, their bewilderment turned to shock when Long Chen unleashed his devastating world extermination flame lotus upon them. Millions of their elites, the majority of which were world kings and even over a hundred thousand divine venerates, were wiped out in an instant. They were caught off guard and without any defenses. In the end, they died without even understanding what was going on. They had never dreamed that they would all die within the safest place inside the Blue Flame Empire. Other than those elites, there were also millions of soldiers within the buildings. It could be said that the current capital was filled with the Empire's elite soldiers, but the majority were slain with one attack from Long Chen. Hence, they felt like they were going crazy. At this moment, the ruins exploded as hundreds of divine venerates came out of the ground. The majority of those survivors were double supremes. It was only thanks to their immense power that they managed to survive Long Chen's attack. However, they were still left in a wretched state. Even though they survived, they were injured. When Zhu Yunwen and the others arrived at the capital, they could sense countless powerful auras. But now, only a few hundred survivors remained in the entire capital and all the other auras had disappeared. Although they had experienced the Vermilion Bird's trial by fire and become true experts, they were still frightened by such ruthlessness in Reed. Khan looking at that black figure standing in front of them, they all rejoiced that this figure was a friend, not an enemy. At this moment, Lantamba attacked and blue flames exploded out of the space behind him, instantly covering the entire capital. Upon seeing this, Zhu Yunwen and the others' hearts quivered. They felt like their bodies were suppressed by some kind of power. The divine might of a three-flower expert. 
This was the most terrifying aspect of a three-flower expert. Their manifestation was one with the heavens, suppressing the aid of the heavens toward all others. With the ten thousand Daos obeying them, only fellow three-flower experts could resist this. However, Ju Yunwen and the others were only immortal kings. They were blessed by talent, and with their heavenly Tao crowns, they were able to resist world king divine radiances, the pressure of divine venerates, and even the suppressive effects of faith energy. But the power of the three flowers was an entirely separate concept. If it was before the trial by fire, they wouldn't have been able to move a single finger under this pressure. This pressure reminded them of the pressure in the trial. However, the pressure here was even stronger. Fortunately, they were still able to resist this pressure, so they clenched their weapons and stored up energy. With the pressure being resisted by 800,000 of them, the effects were diminished. Although this would definitely affect their combat power, if they all summoned their manifestations and joined forces, they weren't afraid of it. Within this blue flame domain, Lan Tanba moved like a phantom, suddenly appearing in front of Long Chen. His hand, resembling blue lightning, aimed directly at Long Chen's throat with deadly intent. In response, Long Chen calmly swung his hand, and in that instant, a dazzling golden light erupted. Lan Tanba's face contorted in agony, as he was sent hurtling backward like a shooting star. Seeing this, the experts that had followed him into battle were caught off guard. Struck directly by his body, they were blown apart by the impact. Boom! Lan Tianma slammed into the heart of the city. This capital, which had become a hole in the ground, now had a deeper hole smashed into it. Upon seeing this scene, Zhu Yunwen and the others' jaws dropped, and they stared at Long Chen in disbelief. He actually slapped a three-flower earth venerate away. Was he a monster? It wasn't just Ju Yunwen and the others who were shocked. Even Long Chen stared at his own hand in disbelief, feeling like it was inconceivable. However, Long Chen wasn't shocked by his power. What truly astonished him was his reaction speed. Even in front of a three-flower expert, he felt as if everything was within his control. He also found that his speed, reactions, perception, and everything else had gone up by more than one level. It's nothing to be surprised about. You never intentionally trained your spirit, soul, and will. But in the Vermilion Bird Empire, you awakened their power, so your improvement will naturally be rapid, said the dragon expert lightly. However, while it spoke calmly, it couldn't conceal how pleased it was. Clearly, for Long Chen to become so powerful was also something it was proud of. Die. Just then, the ground shook and Lan Tianba charged out of it. The moment he came out, though, Long Chen's figure vanished. When he reappeared, he was already in front of Lan Tianba, slanting his foot into his abdomen. In an instant, Lan Tianba's body curled up and slammed back into the ground ten times faster than he had charged out. The spot that he fell was exactly the same as before. The earth exploded once again. But unlike before, the entire city suddenly began to rise out of the ground, like some monster was standing from beneath the city. Following that, a violent immemorial aura rose. With a furious roar, a giant wolf broke free from the ground, its wild power causing the stars to shake. Blue flame voracious wolf. He he, you finally come. Long Chen smiled sinisterly. In read, com chapter 4020, two fighting a three flower earth venerate the blue flame voracious wolf was a flame divine beast of the immemorial era. Although its reputation was not as magnificent as the vermilion bird, it was still a well-known existence. When its head broke free from the ground, lifting the entire city into the air, the wolf's mouth revealed fangs stretching for miles, and its two eyes resembled blazing suns, radiating a scorching and fearsome aura. Its roar in particular seemed like it could tear apart people's souls. Fortunately, 
everyone had experienced the vermilion bird's trial by fire and was able to endure this pressure otherwise just this roar would have been enough to shatter their human spirits great voracious wolf ancestor these invaders possess the inheritance flame of the vermilion bird they are your sacrifice enjoy them shouted lantanba this blue flame voracious wolf was the blue flame empire's faith divine beast during this time they had offered it countless offerings in preparation to awaken it unexpectedly it was forcibly woken up by long chen if the offerings they gave to awaken it didn't meet its requirements it would be infuriated and devour countless life forms as compensation thus the blue flame empire didn't dare to awaken it for nothing so now that it was forcibly woken it roared furiously lan tianba's shout then locked its attention onto long chen and the others now eating them was the only way to placate its fury as expected when it looked at long chen and the others flames burst out of its eyes and its killing intent erupted with another furious roar the earth was torn asunder and its giant body came out of it its body was almost the same size as the entire capital the moment it showed up a violent pressure caused the world to quiver and faint cracks appeared within heaven and earth as if the very world was being torn apart ju yunwen and the others were shaken they had never imagined that one day they would be fighting an immemorial divine beast that could reach the level of being a faith totem imperial disciples activate a barrier seal this place do not permit anyone to run or transmit any news yunwen yifen kingshuin kyang su all princes and princesses summon the vermilion bird manifestation you will face lan tamba shouted long chen what about the blue flame voracious wolf asked you kyang su hastily it's mine get to work long chen shot toward the blue flame voracious wolf just like that seeing long chen move the others also but to work as eight hundred thousand imperial disciples joined forces summoning their manifestations their figures merged into one enormous immemorial vermilion bird it soared above the nine heavens and formed a barrier around the capital city within the vermilion bird's trial by fire they had learned how to combine their manifestations now they could show it off kill chu yunwen yu kaingsu Chu Yifeng, Yu Qingshuan, and the others unleashed their manifestations. Flames exploded as they attacked Lan Tianba. If it was before, they would have been full of reverence for this three flower earth venerate. But one kick and slap from Long Chen had blasted away that reverence. In their hearts, three flower earth venerates were now just humans. If Long Chen could slap them, then they couldn't be that terrifying. King Shuen, vermilion bird cries at the ten thousand daos. Ju Yunwen suddenly shouted, and Yu King Shuen shot toward the front of their formation. The next moment, her hand made a sword seal, and her sword whistled down, unleashing a rainbow arc. After going through the trial, Yu King Shuen's heavenly rainbow flame was finally starting to awaken. When she unleashed her full power, her sword looked as if it could cut down the very stars. As for Zhu Yunwen, Yu Kaingsu, Zhu Yifeng, and the others, they also attacked at the same time. Flame energy merged into Yu Qingshuan's sword. With Yu Qingshuan as the main attacker, she combined the power of over twenty people, directly attacking Lan Tianba. Seeing this, Lan Tianba hadn't expected them to be so skilled in combination arts. He suddenly realized that he, a grand three flower earth venerate, was actually locked down by Yu Qingshuan. What he didn't know was that he wasn't really locked down by Yu Qingshuan, but by the heavenly rainbow flame. The heavenly rainbow flame didn't care what level the opponent was. Once you were locked down, there was no escaping it. Ignorant juniors, Face your deaths. Lan Tamba roared furiously. 
and a flame sabre appeared in his hand brilliant blue divine radiance then emanated from the weapon filling the surroundings with an otherworldly glow with an overwhelming display of power lan chamba swung his sabre down with astonishing force ripping through the very fabric of the heavens oh both their attacks clashed to the full power of a three flower earth venerate met the combined force of over twenty heavenly geniuses of the current era causing flames to explode into the heavens as a result other than yu king Shuen, everyone else coughed up blood the power of the three flower earth venerate was unimaginably terrifying fortunately they had learned how to share the pressure within the vermilion birds trial by fire so although they were injured it wasn't fatal the other good thing was that lan tiamba also coughed up blood clearly even a three flower earth venerate was unable to block their full power this fact invigorated them being able to rival a three flower earth venerate just how prestigious was such a claim Die. lan tiamba was shocked and enraged at being injured so he shot toward them like a bolt of lightning seeing that their combination attack was a real threat to him he took advantage while they were injured to press the attack giving them no breathing room heavenly rainbow killing blow however just as he moved yu king shuin became one with her sword shooting out like a loose arrow she was so fast that by the time he reacted her sword was already pressed against his throat Boom. Lan Tambo was sent staggering back, while Yu Kingshuan was forced back a hundred miles before being able to stabilize herself. Now, an unhealthy rosiness appeared on her cheeks. After all, the attack of a three flower earth venerate was not so easy to receive. Even if Lan Tambo was injured and didn't have time to accumulate power, just half of his full power attack was already enough to injure her and shake her spiritual kai thai seeing you king shuin injured lan tianba shot after her this was his best time to attack you can die instead just then zhu yifeng's sword slashed down following him were yu kaiang su and the others you what infuriated lan tianba was that this attack was precisely yu king shuin's previous attack but this one had all their power merged into it. Boop. Lan Tianba was sent flying and hacking up blood. As for Zhu Yunwen and the others, they also coughed up blood, but they grew increasingly excited. Inside their minds, they were roaring with excitement. They could now fight three flower earth venerates head on, so who dared to look down on them now? Just then, the recovered Yu King Shuin unleashed a tempest of attacks giving Lan Tianba no chance to recover. As a result, Lan Tianba was repeatedly injured. It was like he was drowning, and they were doing their best to keep his head underwater, giving him no chance to breathe. As long as he had no chance to recover, he would stay in a weakened state. It was not easy for him to finally force away Yu Kingshuan, but then Zhu Yifeng and the others attacked, keeping him pinned down. Blocking Zhu Yifeng's attack further injured him, and then Yu Kaingsu took his spot to attack Lan Tianba again. Yu Kingchuan was in charge of disturbing him, while everyone else joined forces to attack him, leaving him with no room to retaliate. Finally, Lan Tianba grew afraid as he knew that he was entrapped. If he had no chance to recover, he would eventually die. Great voracious wolf, Yu. Lan Tamba shouted for aid from the blue flame voracious wolf, as the others were already slain by the imperial disciples. However, halfway through his shout, he was shocked to find that the blue flame voracious wolf was covered in flames. Raging flame prison. Long Chen's voice rang out. Following that, a sacred chanting sound resounded throughout heaven and earth. This chapter upload first at Inread, come chapter 4023, subduing the blue flame voracious wolf sacred chanting resounded throughout heaven and earth like the imperial edict of a god. As Long Chen chanted, white flames rose and a terrifying heat unfurled. 
surprisingly the dome of the heavens was about to collapse from the heat but a layer of frost still covered the earth as if it had become a land of ice and snow in reed calm this time hugh o'linger didn't hold back the full power of the ice soul was unleashed into the strongest raging flame prison where the blue flame voracious wolf was trapped inside the blue flame voracious wolf roared and struggled against the prison but even as flames exploded out of it and its claws raked across the prison it was unable to break free it then suddenly opened its mouth and a blue flame spear smashed into the flame prison Boop! the huge flame spear caused the prison to deform it began to twist but didn't break at this moment the pillars of the prison had black flames flicker over them those black flames possessed a sinister aura akin to the devil's maw devouring the blue flames when the wild blue flame voracious wolf saw those black flames it instantly went still it recognized the origin of those flames those were the yanzu flames even after devouring it it was still so powerful that Hugh O'Linger wouldn't lightly use them. She couldn't fully control them yet. However, with the support of the Nirvana scripture and Long Chen, she unleashed it to devour her opponent's power. Thus, the blue flame voracious wolf was now like a terrified rabbit. It was no longer even thinking about obtaining some sacrificial offering and only wanted to flee. However, the more it struggled, the more the prison shrank, terrifying it. Also, the power of the ice soul gradually permeated throughout its body, weakening its flame energy. As for the Yan Zhu flame, it was like maggots devouring his energy. As a result, the blue flame voracious wolf was rapidly weakening. The Yan Zhu flame really is terrifying. Even an immemorial divine beast is restrained by it. Long Chen couldn't help being shocked as he watched its effect. As he was forming hand seals and chanting, his spirit, soul, and will merged. In this state, every syllable of the Nirvana scripture that he chanted seemed to be able to control this world's fate. Long Chen was overwhelmed by a profound feeling he had never experienced before. It became evident to him that he had undergone a complete transformation through his dedicated practice of the dragon soul body forging art. The flame energy of the world flowed under Long Chen's control. Before this, he could only control the power of heaven and earth. But now, he had a feeling like he could control anywhere the Nirvana scripture could reach. He even felt like he could extract the flame energy of the imperial disciples for himself but of course he didn't do so. That would just be weakening his own side. Strangely, he found that he was unable to support them with flame energy. He was only able to use this flame energy to support himself and Hugh O'Linger, whose soul was linked with his. Other than that, he also found that he was capable of using the power of his spirit, soul, and will through the nirvana scripture to rapidly consume the blue flame voracious wolf's flame energy and give it to Hugh O'Linger. As a result, the blue flame voracious wolf roared in terror, but it was meaningless. As time passed, it grew weaker and weaker, while Hugh O'Linger only grew stronger. In truth, the blue flame voracious wolf only ever had one chance to escape and that was to unleash its full power the moment the flame prison condensed. Then it would have had a high chance of shattering the flame prison. But in the end, it was the heroic spirit worshipped by the Blue Flame Empire. Having stayed alive thanks to the Blue Flame Empire's offerings and faith energy, it would not use up so much of its energy for nothing, or replenishing it would be too difficult and take too long. Thus, it hadn't unleashed a full power attack right at the start, resulting in it being caught in this prison of death. It had lost its only chance of escape. Long Chen couldn't help sighing with relief. This time, his life finally took a turn for the better. Originally, he had thought that it would take a great price to subdue this blue flame voracious wolf, but it turned out to be quite easy. The 800,000 Imperial Disciples had fully sealed down this area, 
so no information could leave this place. As there was no worry about other variables intruding, everything was under control. Don't let him escape. Suddenly, Yu Qingxuan cried out. They had just exchanged blows with Lan Qianba, causing him to cough up blood and shoot back. However, the way he flew back was a bit odd, and Yu Qingxuan instantly had bad feeling. As expected, Lan Tianba was a crafty old fox. Seeing that the blue flame voracious wolf was trapped, he knew that it was over. Thus, he borrowed their combination attack's power to fly away in the other direction, wanting to escape their blockade. Lan Tianba was extremely fast, and by the time they reacted, he was already at the edge of the barrier. Ignorant juniors, just you wait. Your vermilion bird empire will pay a bloody price. Lan Tianba's saber lit up with divine light, unleashing a full power attack at the barrier. However, just as his saber slashed onto the barrier, all the imperial disciples, including Yu Qingxuan and Yu Yunwen, rapidly formed hand seals. A giant vermilion bird totem then appeared on top of the barrier, blocking Lan Tianba's saber. But Half of Lan Tianba's body instantly collapsed and his saber flew away. He almost exploded. The miserable Lan Tianba had never expected that the strongest technique of the 800,000 imperial disciples would actually be defense. Of course, that was how they had managed to resist the terrifying pressure of the trial by fire. The combined Defenses of 800,000 Vermilion Bird Empire's experts possess such power that the backlash almost took Lan Tianma's life. Even in his peak condition, he wouldn't be able to break their absolute defense, let alone in this weakened state. But if he was in top condition, at least, he wouldn't be half dead after trying. Yu Yifeng's sword then slashed down, taking advantage of Lan Tianba's confusion to cut off his head, shattering his soul. Just like that, an empire's master, a majestic three-flower earth venerate, was slain by their combined forces. Looking at Lan Tianba's head, they felt like they were dreaming. They didn't dare to believe that they had actually done this. Just then, on Long Chen's side, within the endless flames, the giant blue flame voracious wolf was dragged into a black spatial gate by the flame prison. Boom! The spatial gate then slammed shut, and the blue flame voracious wolf vanished. The next moment, Long Chen raised his head and laughed. Success! I think you should take a look at and read. Com Chapter 4024 Sending a Big Gift Within the Primal Chaos Space the indomitable blue flame voracious wolf was no longer the slightest bit ferocious, its eyes only filled with terror. Like usual, no matter how powerful it was, once it arrived at the primal chaos space, it would just tuck its tail between its legs. Looking at the cowering blue flame voracious wolf, Long Chen smiled. The primal chaos space was practically an unrivaled existence. As long as Long Chen could drag the other side inside, they would have to submit. Regretfully, the primal chaos space was not all powerful, and dragging an opponent inside was not easy. Guo Linger quickly devour it. Looking at the quivering blue flame voracious wolf, Long Chen felt no pity. For its spirit to not extinguish after all this time, who knew just how many souls had been offered to it? Numerous heroic spirits forged a deep connection with their believers. As devotees offered sacrifices to these spirits, they bestowed blessings upon their faithful followers. Among these heroic spirits, the blue flame voracious wolf stood out for its infamous brutality. It had earned the position of being the faith divine beast of the blue flame empire. To attain such a status, both the empire and the creature itself had likely engaged in dark and terrible deeds to nourish its power and influence. At this moment, Hugh Olinger transformed into 800 white flame dragons and began to tear at its body. The blue flame voracious wolf yelped in pain, 
but its power seemed to be restrained here let alone in its weakened state even in its full power state it would have no ability to resist within the primal chaos space seeing that huo linger was steadily devouring it long chen's mind exited the primal chaos space at this time ju yifen came over while holding lan tiamba's head boss we actually killed a three flower earth venerate inreed calm not bad but don't get overconfident this fellow is the weakest of three flower earth venerates i heard that he originally didn't even have the power to reach this level but after offering a large number of sacrifices to the blue flame voracious wolf it used its power to forcibly help him condense the three flowers thus his power cannot compare to the other three flower earth venerates even so be able to kill him with just your combined effort is enough to prove the bravery of the vermilion bird empire said long chen first giving them a warning to avoid them getting conceited but they did deserve a praise big brother what do we do now return to the empire and attack them from behind asked zhu yifen no no it's still too early before the information spreads let's do another round of plundering long chen then brought them around to search for the blue flame empire's treasuries they quickly found a secret space when they saw it they almost shouted in excitement the treasury displayed a breathtaking sight with battleships and war chariots meticulously arranged in neat rows as far as the eye could see there was an abundance of battle armor and divine weapons moreover an enormous mountain of heavenly flame crystals added to the awe-inspiring spectacle shining brilliantly in their magnificent splendor although they had been excited by the violet thunderclap empire's treasury in the end those treasures were of lightning elements however the blue flame empire's treasures were all of flame elements so they were practically made for them there's no time to split them up just bring out a hundred lightning thunderclap battleships and a hundred of the blue flame empire's battleships to make us seem like a contingent composed of both of their empires we'll now go to the feather cry empire their relationship with the blue flame empire isn't good so we'll gamble that we can attack a bit faster than the information reaches them said long chen right now they no longer doubted his words so they immediately carried out his orders they emptied the treasury and rushed to the feather cry empire at full speed according to reason closeness bred fondness but it was the opposite for empires the closer they were the worse their relationships would be that was especially true for two empires that were evenly matched in power it was all too easy for conflicts to erupt between them oh the battleships crossed through the barrier directly barging into the feather cry empire before the guards could even ring the alarm bells long chen's voice was like thunder resounding throughout the air the violet thunderclap and blue flame empires have arrived alert your empire lord the plan has changed gather your troops for battle hearing that announcement and then looking at the specific lightning thunderclap battleships and blue flame battleships the soldiers didn't dare to tarry they immediately sent word to the capital then just like that long chan and the others swaggered toward the capital when they passed through the large cities other flying boats actually lined up around them like an escort for a respected guest obviously this escort had to be the feather cry empire welcoming the violet thunderclap empire not the blue flame empire but since they had come together the feather cry empire had to express enough sincerity otherwise if the blue flame empire were to properly fawn over the violet thunderclap empire and gain their support the feather cry empire would have difficulty surviving their pressure originally everyone was nervous inside the battleships afraid of being exposed but unexpectedly everything went according to long chen's calculations however when they saw how things were going so smoothly that they even had escorts they realized the crux of it 
So long Chen had seen through how the Feathercry Empire would react in order to curry favor with the Violet Thunderclap Empire. His enemies were dancing in the palm of his hand, causing the Imperial disciples to almost prostrate themselves toward him in admiration. Such control over politics was beyond their imagination. In truth, they simply overestimated Long Chen. Ignoring whether or not Long Chen really did have such a gift, the truth was that he couldn't be bothered to use it. Ever since the miserable defeat of the Martial Heaven Continent, Long Chen had affirmed his cultivation path. He no longer bothered wasting his energy on schemes. What was the point? Long Chen had planned and strategized so much for the final battle of the Martial Heaven Continent. They even had a genius like Lai Tangshuan with countless calculations and countless preparations. But in the end, if it weren't for the dragon expert, everyone would have died. As a result, now, Long Chen was just blindly following his heart's desire. In any case, as long as he was strong enough, whatever he did was right. He didn't want to waste his precious energy and time on senseless schemes. The battleships rapidly closed in on the capital. After all, Long Chen was in a race against time. He was gambling, gambling that the Feather Cry Empire had not received word of the Blue Flame Empire's destruction before they arrived. The Feather Cry Empire's capital quickly appeared in the distance. When Long Chen saw the state of the formation around the city, he smiled. Ju Yunwen and the others were also delighted. Their grand formation was not at full power or in any combat state. In fact, when they entered, the Feather Cry Empire's experts were lined up to welcome them. Prepare yourselves. We're going with our original plan, said Long Chen. Everyone got to work, inserting countless crystals into the battleships. They then raised their attack power to the maximum. Brother Kin Yu... I am sorry to make you personally welcome me. Today I'll give you a big gift. Please kindly accept it. Long Chen suddenly imitated Wang Tebei's voice and shouted to the capital. That elder called King Yu was their empire lord. As it was his first time being called brother by Wang Tebei, he felt moved. Empire Lord Wang, for you to personally come, I... I... what the fuck... Kin Yu was in the midst of saying some courteous words when he was shocked to find that the battleships seemed to have gone out of control and were barreling toward him. In Reed, Com Chapter 4025, Silver Wing Blood Falcon, the Feather Cry Empire's experts stood stunned as twenty battleships smashed into their capital light cannonballs. Seeing the impending disaster, countless people cried out in shock and scrambled to avoid it. However, the attack was so swift and unexpected that most of them couldn't dodge in time. Ten lightning thunderclap battleships and ten blue flame battleships, each laden with heavenly lightning crystals and heavenly flame crystals, collided with the ground, resulting in a world-shaking explosion upon impact. The devastating blast rocked the area as flames and lightning spread, killing the surrounding experts, leaving destruction and chaos in its wake. In an instant, the glorious capital was raised to the ground, leaving Kin Yu in a state of shock and rage. He actually thought that the battleships had gone out of control. But when he saw Long Chen and the others in the air, he understood. Warriors of the Vermilion Bird Empire, the time to protect the Vermilion Bird Empire's people and dignity has come. The enemies before you are not humans, they are bloodthirsty jackals. Raise your weapons, pierce the armor of your enemies, cut off their heads, and protect your families in the empire. On the battlefield, there is no mercy, no compassion. What you need is the courage to fight to the death against your enemies, the courage to face death and fear without retreat. Kill. Long Chen shot toward Kin Yu, his blood kai rumbling like wild thunder. You are Long Chen. Brett, you're courting death. 
Ken Yu finally understood that Long Chen and the others had disguised themselves as the experts from the Violet Thunderclap Empire and the Blue Flame Empire to cause a calamity for him. Just now, the detonations of those battleships had killed countless experts, which were mostly his empire's elites, causing Kin Yu's heart to drip blood. Thus, seeing Long Chen coming at him, Kin Yu exploded with killing intent. His three flowers then quivered, and he unleashed a claw at Long Chen, instantly using his sharpest killing blow. As the sharp claw raked through the air, an enormous claw image filled the sky, resonating with the heavenly dows. The moment he made his move, all of heaven and earth fell under his control. Boom! Long Chen's fist then smashed into the claw, spreading a ripple through the world. In the end, both Long Chen and Qin Yu grunted and fell back, being evenly matched. What? Long Chen an immortal king was able to fight evenly against a three-flower earth venerate, someone two major realms above him. The Feather Cry Empire's experts couldn't believe their eyes. But following that, there was another intense explosion. To everyone's surprise, Yu Qingxuan was attacking a white-haired elder, who was also a three-flower earth venerate. She and the other imperial disciples once more joined forces to fight a three-flower earth venerate. However, this three-flower earth venerate's power was actually inferior to Lan Tiamba. That was because his realm was entirely created through paling up medicinal pills and outside forces. If Lan Tiamba could be considered a half-step three-flower earth venerate, then this person was a quasi-three-flower earth venerate. As a result, after receiving one blow from Yu Qingxuan and the others, he already hacked up blood. Yu Qingxuan, Zhu Yunwen, and the others were dumbfounded by this sight. During their intense fight with Lan Tianba, they had sustained numerous injuries, and on their way to this place, they had only managed to partially recover their strength. Thus, they had anticipated another grueling and bloody battle. But, to their surprise, this elder turned out to be considerably weaker than expected. Is he a fake? shouted Yu Kaingsu. Who cares? Kill him first, responded Zhu Yifeng. They then joined forces against the elder. As for the other experts of the Feather Cry Empire, they tried to help as well, but the Imperial disciples forced them back. Although the detonation of the battleships had killed a portion of their experts, there were still millions and millions of them. In truth, the Vermilion Bird Empire was at an absolute disadvantage just by looking at the number. Fortunately, the Imperial Disciples had completely transformed themselves, so they simply slaughtered their enemies, decimating the Feather Cry Empire's experts. Meanwhile, Long Chen was fighting Qin Yu. As the fight went on, the blood kai in his body circulated even faster and stronger. After learning the dragon soul body forging art, Long Chen's essence, blood, spiritual kai, and bones all had spherical runes inside of them. They were burning like a melting glacier, unleashing an endless flood of energy throughout Long Chen's body. Every time Long Chen's fist struck out, the void collapsed as if heaven and earth could not contain his power. On the other hand, Qin Yu, the Empire Lord, had his three flowers revolving behind him. As he did so, the ten thousand Daos rumbled and countless runes flowed on top of his body. He was clearly going all out. Your blood kai is deficient, as well as your soul. Have you been consumed by wine and women? As Long Chen fought, he began to force back Qin Yu. Slowly, he realized that his opponent seemed to be in a weakened state and not trying to hold back. Clearly, Qin Yu's aura was slightly stronger than Lan Tianba's, but his actual combat power was a level weaker. So, it was very curious. Long Chen knew that this was their final chance for a sneak attack. In a bit, the destruction of the Blue Flame Empire would quickly become widespread knowledge. There was no chance for another sneak attack, 
so Long Chen wanted to test himself against a powerful expert. Ignorant brat, if I hadn't just sacrificed a large portion of my essence, blood, and soul, would you even be able to receive three attacks from me? raged King Yu. Following his roar, the earth began to shake, and a giant sacrificial altar broke out of the ground. On it, there was a totem pole of an immemorial devil bird. It seemed to be a falcon with sharp claws that looked to be made of gold, but its wings were silver. As for its eyes, they were filled with an ominous light. Oh, to awaken it, you sacrificed your blood and soul. No wonder you're so weak, said Long Chen. This silver-winged blood falcon was also an immemorial beast, known to be bloodthirsty and ferocious. In order to worship such a heroic spirit, you had to offer it enough blood-soul energy as tribute. Furthermore, in order to awaken it, Kin Yu had sacrificed a huge amount of blood-soul energy from others to it, but it still wasn't enough. In the end, he sacrificed a portion of his own blood-soul energy to awaken it. When this totem appeared, a berserk fearsome aura radiated throughout the world. After that, a giant figure flew out of it. It was the silver-winged blood falcon. In an instant, it locked onto Long Chen, seemingly sensing his powerful blood Kai. Even without orders from Qin Yu, it already opened its mouth and inhaled, causing a giant vortex to appear. Before Long Chen could react, he was sucked into the silver-winged blood falcon's stomach. Long Chen's disappearance then caused Yu Qingxuan and the others to cry out. It happened so suddenly that even someone as powerful as Long Chen had no ability to resist. He was instantly devoured. Great heroic spirit, enjoy this top great sacrificial offering, shouted Kin Yu. A little silver wing blood falcon thinks it can devour true dragon essence blood? Are you not afraid of biting more than you can chew? Just then, Long Chen's sinister voice rang out from within the silver-winged blood falcon's stomach. They then heard a roar that was like a god's. Dragon King Battle Armor In Read, Com Chapter 4026, an immense battle starts following Long Chen's shout. That giant silver-winged blood falcon emitted golden light, so bright that it even covered up its silver hue. After that, people were shocked to see its body starting to inflate, growing larger and larger. The silver-winged blood falcon also seemed to have a bad feeling and opened its mouth wide, as if trying to spit Long Chen out. Oh, however, it was already too late. In a dramatic way, the falcon's body exploded, unleashing a torrent of astral winds that swept through the surroundings. The ensuing explosion was so powerful that golden light illuminated the entire world. Summon the defensive formation, shouted Ju Yunwen hastily. In an instant, the imperial disciples formed hand seals. Although they had been spread throughout the battlefield, they immediately gathered together. After that, the vermilion bird barrier enveloped them. Boom! Terrifying essence blood power struck them, and the impact was like a star exploding, blowing their surroundings apart. As for their opponents, they were blown out of existence. Just like that, an entire capital vanished, along with millions of their experts. The detonation of an immemorial beast was really terrifying. As the golden light slowly dimmed, Long Chen's figure appeared. How foolish! Did you think that you could touch my dragon king essence, blood? These words weren't Long Chen's, but the dragon experts. Clearly, the silver-winged blood falcon's desire to devour true dragon essence blood was a daydream. Little fellow, what do you think? You're finally seeing the true power of the dragon soul body forging art. The dragon expert's voice contained a touch of pride. Even Long Chen himself was shocked. He had never imagined that he would one day control such power. In the vermilion bird space, he had no references, so he didn't know just how high his power was rising. Now, he finally witnessed the difference between the current him 
and his old self. The power is terrifying, but the exhaustion is also shocking. That single attack took 30% of my energy. Long Chen couldn't help bitterly smiling. A single eruption of power, where he immediately reigned in his aura actually cost him 30% of his energy. Based on that, he would probably only be able to maintain his strongest state for a few breaths' time. Your control is too lacking, so the majority of your energy is just cancelling itself out. Furthermore, your human race's bodies aren't as powerful as the dragon race. The amount of power that you can store is also limited. For you to have reached this extent is already far beyond my original expectations. So, just take it easy. As your cultivation base grows, your physical body will be able to hold more power, and your control will also increase. The strength and time limit will then grow as well, consoled the dragon expert. There was no way around it. After all, a human couldn't grow to nine feet. As for the true dragon race, after becoming dragon kings, they could easily reach a length of thousands of miles. There was no comparison between the two. Even so, Long Chen's current power was already far beyond the dragon expert's original expectation. Suddenly, blood splashed through the air as two swords swiftly swung through the sky. In a seamless and coordinated attack, both Yu Kai-Ing-Su and Zhu Yunwen struck simultaneously, causing two heads to be sent soaring into the sky. Excellent. Three three flower earth venerate heads, two of them being empire lords. That's enough to raise our side's morale. Zhu Yunwen smiled excitedly as he held Qin Yu's head. However, he quickly saw Long Chen looking at the head in his hand hesitatingly so his heart sank. Brother Long, did I say something wrong? You shouldn't have wiped out his soul. I was planning on finding out some information. Long Chen bitterly smiled. Long Chen felt Wang Teve to be quite sinister. Perhaps this sinister plot was something only the Empire Lords were somewhat aware of. When he had slain Lan Tianba, he hadn't had time to leave him alive. As for Yu Kai Su and Zhu Yunwen, they had attacked too quickly for Long Chen to stop them. I'm sorry, Brother Long. I was too brash, said Zhu Yunwen awkwardly. It's fine. If he's dead, he's dead. They are only following the orders of the Violet Thunderclap Empire, so they might not even be aware of their top secrets. Let's clean up the battlefield and return to the Vermilion Bird Empire, said Long Chen. Big brother, we were quite fast this time, and no one escaped. Perhaps we can do another sneak attack? Proposed Zhu Yunwen. The others looked at Long Chen with anticipation. They had annihilated two imperial capitals in such a short time, having accomplished something unprecedented in history. If they could attack another empire on top of it, their names would go down in history, and it would alleviate the pressure on the Vermilion Bird Empire. If we keep launching sneak attacks, the eight empires will definitely fall into disarray. They'll be afraid of being the next target, and be forced to defend. Even if we stop attacking, it will still apply a great deal of pressure on them, said Yu Kaiinksu. In their opinion, as long as the other side wasn't prepared, even if they couldn't beat their enemies, they could always run. The fact that they had repeatedly fought three flower experts had given them a boost of confidence. Long Chen shook his head. There will be no other chance. The success of this sneak attack was mostly luck, and news of the Blue Flame Empire should have already spread. Moreover, the eight empires will not be withdrawing to their capitals to defend, as they don't know our next target. Rather than letting themselves be run wild by us, they will instead launch an all-out assault on the Vermilion Bird Empire. Then we'll be the ones forced to defend passively. Furthermore, if they are able to somehow calculate where we're going and ambush us midway, they won't need much to annihilate us. Just five three flower earth venerates are enough to wipe us out. Further risks now are not worth it when compared to the gains. 
in order to avoid huge casualties on the side of the vermilion bird empire we have to immediately return before the eight empires launch their assault upon hearing this everyone's hearts shook it seemed that they had been thinking too simply there's another important point wing tebe and wing tanio's master mentioned something but didn't explain it in detail you have to know that enemies you can see aren't that frightening but the ones you don't see coming that's the true terror if we can't find any clues we have to prepare ourselves in advance said long chen everyone nodded they then cleaned up the battlefield and returned to the vermilion bird empire on their battleships in order to avoid them from being blocked by others long chen intentionally took them on a detour when they reached the border of the vermilion bird empire and saw the destroyed city along with endless corpses ju yunwen and the others eyes instantly turned scarlet bookmark this website in read com to update the latest novels chapter four thousand twenty seven shadow of the week everything went as long chen expected the eight empires had launched a ferocious assault upon learning of the sneak attacks the tall city walls of their empire now lay in ruins and the battlefield was strewn with lifeless bodies emanating a grim and pungent scent of blood in the air in reed calm this was where our imperial father was defending we have to reinforce him shouted ju yunwen you go king shuen and i will reinforce the empresses we'll split up here said long chen in truth long chen had no intention of reinforcing yu zioyan he was well aware that the emperor's strength far surpassed their expectations before coming to the vermilion bird empire zia guang had told him that while in terms of intelligence yu zioyan was a straw bag in terms of power he was a monster however long chen knew that from the viewpoint of members of the imperial family being faithful patriots was necessary as the emperor had supreme might they held him as a god in their hearts so if the emperor was leading the troops in battle they had to accompany him even if their own mothers were in danger they had to view the emperor as the most important thing unless he gave them the order to reinforce the other sides long chen's original plan was to lead them to reinforce the others but he still respected their choice after all the competition for the position of emperor was not always above board if these princes and princesses wanted the position of emperor they had to obtain the approval of the current emperor so displaying their full power in front of him was their best chance if the emperor didn't see all their efforts it would be like dressing up for a walk at midnight as for why long chen brought away yu kingchuan it was to express their position in terms of the competition for the spot of emperor rather long seeing long chen wanted to leave them they lost their mental pillar ju yunwen instantly grew anxious bade brother ju yifeng also hesitated you are all princes and princesses with your own burdens to carry the storm tests the grass the fire tests the gold it is time to bear your fangs at your enemies and defend the vermilion bird empire's dignity remember every single one of you is a main character a hero go and show off your power display your own light make history remember your name encouraged long chen this encouragement set their blood on fire stimulating their pride every one take care crush your enemies the dawn of victory will cast its light across every corner of the vermilion bird empire after the war we can drink and eat until we're satisfied said long chen he then left with yu kaiengsu even once long chen was gone his heroic words still continued to echo throughout heaven and earth not dissipating for a long time it aroused the battle intent within their souls crush our enemies we are the descendants of the geli bloodline the heirs to the vermilion birds will we can't lose space for our ancestors ju yunwen roared and led all the princes and princesses away kill the eight hundred thousand imperial disciples roared as well 
their killing intent shaking the heavens. It was like their anger could only be quenched through killing their enemies. A pair of golden wings suddenly appeared on Long Chen's back. As the giant wings covered the sky, his speed instantly shot out. While flying, Yu Qingxuan held on tightly to Long Chen's chest, and his arm was around her waist. Watching as the space around her twisted, it was like they were in a space-time channel. She couldn't see their surroundings at all. Long Chen, these wings. Yu Qingxuan's eyes suddenly widened. Yes, they are Kun Tu's wings. I refined them and extracted the runes. Now they are mine, he he. The Kunpeng race's speed really is nice, chortled Long Chen. The fastest person that Long Chen had ever seen so far was Cloud. It was said that the Cloud chasing heaven swallowing Sparrow's speed was slightly better than the Kunpeng race, but the attack and defense of their wings was a far cry from the Kunpeng race. Previously, Long Chen had obtained the secret arts of the Lightning Falcon race, making his speed astonishing. But compared to the Kunpeng race, they still paled in comparison. Long Chen's Kunpeng wings caused space to distort because he was incredibly fast. Due to this, he could only vaguely grasp the terrain around him through his divine sense. The major cities inside the Vermilion Bird Empire were in chaos, and there were battlefields all over the place. He could even see people from the Vermilion Bird Empire fighting and killing each other. Long Chen, why does this happen? Are people's hearts really so dark? Seeing the experts that had betrayed the Vermilion Bird Empire and become their enemies' dogs, slaughtering their old comrades, Yu Qingxuan thought that they were even crueler than the real enemies. She was unable to understand these people. Why had they become like this? It was incomprehensible to her. Many people look like sheep. Facing the strong, they are gentle, humble, and pitiable. But against the weak, they become ruthless fiends, venting their own repressed feelings a hundred times over onto people who are weaker than them. The weak make things hard on the weak. The poor make things hard on the poor. You can't even imagine just how merciless that world is. So the people that look the most pitiable might not be pitiable. Or perhaps I should say amongst pitiable people, there are also hateful people. Now you see their hateful side. When the umpire wins and they are caught, they will cry and weep for mercy. Then you'll see their pitiable side. When a person commits wrongs, you can forgive the harm that they've done to you. But you cannot forgive them for the harms that they've caused to other people. After all, you cannot give forgiveness on behalf of others. In the end, the bitter fruit that you brood must be consumed by yourself, said Long Chen. Long Chen had seen far too many people like this, so he was already numb to it. He also knew that the executions would descend in the end. Long Chen, I find that you are powerless in life a lot. I always feel pain in my heart when I see those ugly things. I feel like I've experienced this pain before, as though there are some scenes that I've seen before. Sometimes I just cry for no reason. I feel like I don't even know who I am. Long Chen looked at Yu King Shuan. He saw her distress and pain, knowing that there was no way to fully erase all the memories of her past reincarnations. But she couldn't actually remember those memories. As they layered on top of each other, they would definitely be chaotic. Tightly holding her, he said, Don't feel lost. Don't feel afraid. Starting now, I will protect you. I will not permit anyone to hurt you. Upon hearing this, Yu Qingxuan's lost expression vanished, and a beautiful smile gradually appeared in her lips. Learning her head against Long Chen's chest, she felt his powerful heartbeats. For her, Long Chen's embrace was the warmest abode. But suddenly, the void exploded, causing the sun and moon to lose their light. Some kind of violent power had destroyed the laws of the ten thousand Daos in the surroundings. Within endless fragments of space-time, 
a figure came flying out of a collapsing space. Mong, when Yu Kingshuan saw that figure, she cried out. It was none other than Jang Huixin, but a worrisome sight greeted her blood trickled from the corner of Jang Huixin's mouth, a clear sign of her injuries after Jang Huixin emerged from the collapsing space. Three three flower earth venerates followed her, showcasing their formidable presence. At this sight, Long Chen released Yu Kingshuan and flapped his wings, flying like a bolt of lightning. At that moment, a fist covered in golden dragon scales, which emitted blinding divine radiance, struck one of the three. In read, Com Chapter 4028 Slaying an Earth Venerate Boom. Long Chen's fist smashed down with overwhelming power, crashing down upon those three elders who had just forced back Jang Huixin and were chasing after her. Long Chen charged forward like a furious battle god, his speed so fast that it caused the very void to collapse. The ferocity of his strike enveloped all three of them, causing a wild wave of sand to rise and the grand Dao runes to shatter. Within this wild tempest, they couldn't see clearly, so they fell back. Who's there? All three of them felt their blood kai flipping inside of them, but they were surprised to not sense the other side's three flower aura. Thus, one of them shouted furiously. This person was precisely the expert of the Violet Thunderclap Empire, Wang Taniao's master. Your dad. A sneer rang out. After that, a pair of golden wings appeared and a fist smashed toward Wang Tianyao's master. When this elder finally saw Long Chen, his eyes were full of disbelief. He refused to believe that the person to knock them back was actually this little immortal king. Seeing Long Chen actually dare to attack him, he furiously stabbed his sword at Long Chen's chest. He didn't believe that Long Chen would dare to ignore his attack. Contrary to his expectations, the direction of Long Chen's fist didn't change, and an invisible force suddenly knocked aside his sword, forcing it off its original path. Boom. Long Chen's fist then smashed into the face of Wang Tianyao's master, causing countless cracks to appear on his head. The impact was so potent that it nearly took his life. His power had been focused in his sword and he hadn't anticipated some mysterious energy to cause his attack to miss. Thus, Long Chen's fist came very close to shattering his head. Wang Tianyao's master was instantly sent flying and vanished without a trace. What a shame! I just missed a little bit. Long Chen sighed inside. He had almost killed his enemy with this attack. If Long Chen had summoned the Dragon King battle armor, this attack would have definitely blown him apart. But if he had summoned it, the latter would have sensed the threat of death and refused to fight Long Chen. Just like that, Long Chen's Kunpeng wings flapped, and he vanished, chasing after Wang Tianyao's master. Three flowers condense, five kiss are born. Wang Tianyao's master was covered in cold sweat. He roared, and with just a thought, his almost broken head rapidly healed. At the same time, flames erupted from his three flowers as he no longer dared to be the slightest bit careless. He actually ignited the power of his three flowers. Seeing Long Chen chasing after him, he knew that if he was forced into a passive position, what awaited him was a furious tempest of attacks. Long Chen was the typical case of a frontal attacker who would push the enemy toward death through constant attacks once he took the advantage, not giving his enemy the room to recover. As an expert, who had experienced countless battles, Wang Tianyao's master knew that, if he dodged, he would only die faster. So, he had to counterattack, even if he was still injured. Violet lightning pierces the clouds. As Wang Tianyao's master merged with his sword, his three flowers quivered. He then attacked with his sharpest killing blow, fighting for his chance to recover. As long as he could force Long Chen back, he would have a chance to recover. It would also buy time for his comrades to assist him. 
To his surprise, his all-out attack struck nothing but empty air. The Long Chan who had been charging at him turned out to be just an illusory image. Not good. A chilling realization washed over him, causing his hair to stand on end. A dreadful sense of impending doom engulfed him. Three flower protection. He suddenly found that he had lost track of Long Chen, who was so fast that his perception couldn't keep track of him. Hence, his three flowers spread above his head, forming a giant barrier around him. He couldn't sense Long Chen, so he had no idea where Long Chen would come from, leaving him only able to unleash an omnidirectional defense. But that caused his defensive power to plummet. Even so, there was no way around it. He didn't dare to gamble, afraid that by the time he sensed where Long Chen was coming from, it would be too late to block him. Just as he summoned this protection, Long Chen's hand was like claws tearing through his defense. As the protective barrier around him crumbled, the three flowers that represented his power vanished, causing Wang Tianyao's master to cough up blood. But the moment his defenses crumbled, he sensed where Long Chen was, and his sword slashed toward him. Oh, the impact shattered the arm of Wang Tianyao's master and sent his sword flying. Die! Just as Long Chen was preparing to launch the killing blow, the other two elders arrived. However, Long Chen didn't even look at them. Long Chen's foot simply stamped down on Wang Tianyao's master, and the latter instinctively raised his arm to block, only for that arm to be broken as well in read come it had to be known that in the trial by fire, Long Chen's physical body had been strengthened crazily. So, even three flower earth venerates were a far cry from him now. Seeing Long Chen ignore them to attack Wang Tianyao's master, the two elders were surprised and angered. They immediately prepared full power attacks for him. But before they could do so, the void collapsed and two flame swords slashed down. Yu Qingxuan and Jiang Huixin had also joined in the fray, attacking them from behind. If the two elders wanted to attack Long Chen, the defenseless Long Chen might die. But they would also have no chance of survival. In an instant, their hearts grew cold as they realized that everything was within Long Chen's calculations. He had grasped the battlefield's tempo perfectly. Unless they were willing to exchange their lives for Long Chen's, they could only give up on attacking him. Unable to make such a resolution, they chose to switch to blocking. Two explosive sounds then rang out. As Jiang Huixin's sword slashed down, her target hacked up blood, and even his weapon cracked. Clearly, on his own, he wasn't a match for Jiang Huixin. Jiang Huixin was powerful. If it was a one against one or even a one against two, she would have victory in her grasp. But she was at an immense disadvantage against three. As for Yu Qingxuan, her blood kai flipped inside of her after the impact, but her target also didn't get off lightly. Rainbow flames burned his body, consuming his core energy. With Jiang Huixin coming, they didn't dare to continue fighting in this condition and fled in fright. They simply didn't have the power to save their comrade. The next moment, Long Chen's claw stabbed through the head of Wang Tianyao's master, causing him to shriek. His soul was being forcibly red. Boom! Suddenly, he exploded, transforming into a blood mist. Meanwhile, Long Chen's expression had changed. King Xuan, protect yourselves. They are carrying out a Nether River sacrificial ceremony. I'm going to stop them. Nether River sacrificial ceremony. Upon hearing this, the ever calm Jiang Huixin's expression completely changed. In read, calm chapter 4029, insidious scheme with a few flaps of his wings, Long Chen instantly reached his max speed, feeling full of anxiety. What a sinister scheme. They aren't planning on devouring the Vermilion Bird Empire, but completely wiping it out. When the Nether River sacrificial ceremony is complete, the spatial gate will open, and the Nether River's water will flood into the Vermilion Bird Empire. 
This water is toxic, filled with endless resentment, so wherever the water goes all life is extinguished. How would they benefit from that? Are they going to pay such a huge price just to erase the vermilion bird empire? Long Chen could not comprehend why the vile thunderclap empire would do such a thing. This was clearly a big chunk of meat that they were going to destroy without taking a single bite. It made no sense for Long Chen. From the memories of Wing Tania's master, Long Chen saw their plan an altar for the Nether River sacrificial ceremony had secretly been constructed in the city bordering the Vermilion Bird Empire. This city served as the stronghold for the empire's traitors, attracting countless renegades and individuals who had chosen to abandon their allegiance to the empire. Before launching their assault, the eight empires had announced that they were only targeting the imperial family, not indiscriminately killing commoners. Hence, they intentionally carved out a non-combatant area, which was precisely the grounds of the ceremony. Unaware of the impending death trap that awaited them, the traitors continued to gather others in hopes of earning the favor of the eight empires. As Long Chen slew Wing Tianyao's master, the ceremony promptly commenced. The grand formation activated, and in an instant, black flames consumed the entire city. The black flames that engulfed the city were the fiendish flames of hell, and those sacrificial lambs could only meet their demise after suffering endless pain. Ah, uh, what's going on? What are these flames? No, I don't want to die. It's a trap. They are killing us. Heavens, is this the vermilion bird god's punishment for betraying the empire? Countless experts wept as they tried to flee. But the moment they left the city, they were shocked to find a black barrier in front of them. No matter how they charged at it, they were forced back by a terrifying force. Meanwhile, the flames on their bodies grew, and no one could extinguish them. No. Amidst the chaos, cries of despair echoed through the air as millions of experts found themselves trapped within the flames, enduring excruciating pain. The hellish flames mercilessly consumed their bodies, souls, and human spirits, prolonging their suffering rather than granting them a swift end. As their lives were slowly extracted by the formation, the feeling of regret, hatred, and unwillingness lingered in the air. This endless resentment was then absorbed by the formation. The next moment, the image of a gate gradually appeared in the sky. It seemed to have the design of a flower on it, but it was too indistinct to see it clearly. As time passed, more and more resentment was absorbed by the gate, and the gate slowly lit up. Not good. The sacrifice is already starting. While rushing over, Long Chen sensed those horrifying fluctuations and grew even more anxious. Boom! Suddenly, Long Chen was struck by a ray of divine light, resembling two shooting stars perfectly crashing into each other. The impact sent Long Chen tumbling backward, his blood kai flipping inside of him, and stars spinning in his eyes. He almost coughed up blood. When the divine light scattered, Long Chen saw an enormous figure, which caused his pupils to shrink in astonishment. Long Chen, I will repay the enmity of cutting off my wings a hundredfold today. The enormous figure vanished, replaced by a man exploding with killing intent. Kun Tu. Long Chen hadn't expected Kun Tu to actually come. Most shocking of all, his blood kai was so powerful that it didn't seem the slightest bit weaker than Long Chen's. After sensing his aura, Long Chen suddenly realized that Kun Tu had become a world king. Just how was that possible? It had only been a short time since they had last met. How could he advance to the world king realm so quickly? With the world king divine radiance behind his head, his blood kai shook the surrounding space, causing ripples of death to spread. An enormous Kunpeng image then appeared behind him. The current imp was like the master of the world, his gaze exuding such power that others dared not meet his eyes. As he stood there, 
his aishi killing intent bore down upon long chen like an unyielding force as for his eyes they glowed with golden runes as if on the brink of bursting into flames at any given moment through gritted teeth kun tu vowed long chen i will tear your corpse apart to-day his intense hatred for long chen was palpable merely seeing long chen already brought forth a surge of animosity from deep inside him i don't have time for you scram long chen's kunpeng wings flapped and he shot at kun tu like a bolt of lightning in front of kun tu who had become a world king long chen wasn't the slightest bit afraid he simply stamped a foot at him die with a resounding roar kun tu unleashed a powerful punch determined to strike long chen yet to his surprise long chen's attack was a clever feint in a swift motion long chen's kunpeng wings flapped propelling him high above kun tu's head and he swiftly made his escape after all the gates of hell had been opened and long chen had to stop it otherwise everything would be over bastard where do you think you're going feeling enraged kun tu transformed into a giant kunpeng and countless runes flowed on top of his wings he then shot after long chen like a shooting star what shocked long chen was that after becoming a world king kun tu's wings were completely different many of the runes that appeared on his wings were different from long chen's wings furthermore his speed was actually greater than long chen's although long chen flew away first kun tu already caught up to him in just a few breaths time as kun tu closed in on him long chen swiftly swung his saber out in response kun tu folded his wings and met long chen's attack head on the collision sent powerful shock waves rippling in all directions as a result kun tu's body staggered backward coming to a halt while long chen skillfully harnessed the force of the impact to maintain his flight in reed come coward if you have guts fight me properly roared kun tu chasing after long chen once more undeterred by kun tu's pursuit long chen pressed on propelling himself forward at full speed as kun tu was closing in on him once more long chen's keen eye spotted a black barrier looming ahead countless people were screaming in pain inside of the black barrier as the black flames burned black threads slowly floated into the sky at this moment long chen saw a black spatial gate slowly condensing in the sky having a strange design on it long chen actually felt that the design was slightly similar however he was unable to recall where he had seen it before when long chen saw that the barrier was still present he was relieved so he was still on time if the spatial gate was not fully condensed there was still a chance to stop it as long chen prepared to charge toward the barrier and shatter it the space in front of him suddenly distorted and warped the next moment he found himself confronted by the kunpeng race's patriarch as well as the old devil race's old monsters the netherworld's experts and even the nine underworld halls master lio benkeng all the experts that had fought xia gyu hung in the violet flame heaven capital had appeared moreover as long chen had killed almost all their disciples the moment they saw long chen their eyes turned scarlet you bastard of the human race return my people's lives one of the devil race's elders roared and was the first to charge out let's settle things today seeing all these powerful experts long chen showed no hint of fear instead his blood was set ablaze with battle intent dragon king battle armor this chapter upload first at inread com chapter four thousand thirty rich boy bringing wealth boom as long chen's golden scales lit up they enveloped the entire sky with golden divine light resembling golden battle armor moreover the brilliance of this golden light was so intense akin to the radiance of the sun that it rendered people unable to open their eyes in its presence along with its appearance 
Long Chen's overwhelming aura shook the world. Did you think that the likes of you could stop me? With a thunderous roar, he summoned the Dragon King battle armor. It had to be known that after cultivating the Dragon Soul Body forging art, the armor now possessed an unparalleled level of might. Hence, Long Chen exploded with power. While channeling the corporeal and incorporeal powers in his body, he had the desire to shatter heaven and earth with a punch. At this moment, the old devil expert charged at Long Chen with his spear, and the power of a three-flower earth venerate crashed down upon him. The spear was like a demonic dragon striking from its cave, letting out a furious roar. However, when a golden hand caught the spear head, that wild spear instantly turned silent. Even the spear's runes rapidly dimmed until they vanished. Fun! Seeing this, all the other experts of the old devil race rushed forward to assist. As for the attacker, he was shocked. His spear, once fierce and unyielding, now seemed as helpless as a mad dog facing a mighty dragon, losing its connection to him. A chilling sensation of death then engulfed the elder, prompting him to flee even before the others could shout at him to do so. Do you think that you can run? Long Chen then snorted and shoved the spear, and it instantly reached that elder of the all-devil race. In front of countless shocked gazes, the spear pierced through the elder's body and continued to strike the other experts of the all-devil race that were rushing over. The spear was shockingly fast, and another three-flower divine venerate smashed his own spear at it to block it. Boop! As a result, both of the spears exploded, and that old devil race's elder hacked up blood, unable to receive even a single attack from Long Chen. Useless trash scram! Long Chen's life is mine! At this moment, Kun Tu's icy voice rang out, and a golden wing slashed down like a heavenly blade. Unable to react in time, Long Chen was smashed into the ground by the wing. That enormous wing practically pierced through the earth, causing cracks to spread beyond the horizon. Even the three flower earth venerates were left trembling in fear by the overwhelming might of this attack. Such ferocity was unheard of in their lifetimes. What was most astonishing was that this devastating power emanated solely from the physical prowess of the body. Devoid of any fluctuations from the heavenly dows, it was a force that struck with the swiftness of lightning and proved challenging to detect beforehand seeing that huge Kunpeng figure. All the people here were filled with awe. The Kunpeng race was indeed worthy of being a legendary supreme existence. Just as everyone thought that the battle was over and that Long Chen was smashed apart by that blow, Kun Tu's giant body began to quiver. Blood. The earth continued to crack, and Kun Tu's wing pressed deeper into the ground. The ground was deforming from the immense power. Long Chen still not dead? Everyone was shaken. Long Chen hadn't had any defenses just then, so that attack should have been fatal. No, he's not pressing down, he's. At this time, they were horrified to see that Kuntu's claws were bracing against the ground not to press down with his wing, but in an attempt to drag his wing out of the ground. It was as if something under the ground was dragging his wing into the earth. Even the Kunpeng patriarch's expression changed. He then transformed into a giant Kunpeng and grabbed Kuntu, dragging him away. The next moment, a rain of blood fell. Kun Tu was pulled away, but his wing was forcibly ripped off. Ah! Uh, Kun Tu shrieked in pain. These wings were the greatest treasure he had obtained from their ancestral lands. As for his original wings, they had been torn off by Long Chen, practically crippling him. So, in order to gain greater power, Kun Tu had ventured into the ancestral lands and inherited an ancestor's wings. However, as those wings possessed his ancestor's runes, after merging with them, he was unable to control his realm and directly soared into the World King realm. According to reason, that was a good thing. But in truth, it was like plucking out sprouts to make them grow taller, 
severely damaging his foundation. He would quickly find himself reaching his cultivation limit. However, Kantu no longer cared about it. The impact of being defeated by Long Chen in the Three Thousand Worlds was a serious blow to him. If he couldn't get his revenge, let alone reaching his limit, he would probably have never been able to advance out of the immortal king realm. Inheriting these wings caused his power to soar. Even then, these wings were Tay's, so in order to truly display their power he required time to merge with them. But when he received news of Long Chen's whereabouts, how could he wait? He directly charged over. As a result, the foundation of his wings was superficial, and now one of them was forcibly ripped off. Long Chen, Kun Tu roared. This was not the result that he had wanted, completely different from what he had anticipated. Before coming, he had thought of countless ways to torment Long Chen. In fact, he had even thought about what move to use on Long Chen in order to prevent himself from accidentally killing Long Chen. So, now that his wing had been torn off again, he was overwhelmed by shock and rage. His head was blank. After all, the reality was far too different from his goal. Even the Kunpeng Patriarch hadn't expected this. What infuriated him the most was that Kun Tu had explicitly told him that he had reached the third step of merging these wings with his body. However, for his wing to be torn off just like that, it was clear that he hadn't reached that step. In his urgency to kill Long Chen, Kun Tu had actually lied to the Kunpeng Patriarch. That giant wing vanished. After that, space twisted, and Long Chen appeared with Kun Tu's original wings. Long Chen was amazed to find that this wing possessed an immemorial aura, which made him realize that these wings were not ones that Kun Tu had grown again, but treasures that he had inherited. Also, only a very small portion of this wing's runes had been activated. Clearly, Kun Tu was unable to unleash their full power, but he had still come to get revenge. Now, Kun Tu was no longer an enemy in Long Chen's eyes, but an adorable rich boy sending him wealth. Long Chen had just refined his wings and was still immersed in his joy over their speed, but Kun Tu was already in a rush to send him another set. At the same time, Long Chen was grateful to the dragon expert. If it was up to him, he would have already killed Kun Tu in the Three Thousand Worlds. Then he wouldn't have such a nice treasure. Did no one teach you to give gifts in pairs? If you're going to give me such a nice gift, I'll respectfully receive it. Long Chen shot after Kun Tu with flames bursting out of his body, making him look like a blazing spear. Ignorant brat die. Seeing this, the Kun Pen patriarch roared furiously. Long Chen was actually ignoring him and coming straight at Kun Tu. That was a complete disdain of his existence. He immediately attacked, his sharp claws raking through the air, sealing Long Chen's path. However, what no one had expected was for Long Chen's body to suddenly explode before these claws even touched him. In that instant, the Kunpeng Patriarch's expression changed. As he turned around, a scene of horror greeted him. Kun Tu let out a piercing scream, and a cascade of blood followed. Behind him stood Long Chen, holding yet another bloody wing. Chapter 4031 After Beating the Junior, B, the Senior, a clone, everyone was startled. So that was Long Chen's flame clone. It had actually managed to trick everyone, including the Kunpeng Patriarch, who had experienced countless battles. Long Chen's flame clone possessed his aura as it contained his spiritual strength. Hence, without a closer examination, it was impossible to tell the difference. Moreover, everyone's nerves were tense, a mix of shock and anger, causing them to be caught off guard by Long Chen's usage of what seemed like a low-level trick of clone. Even so, this basic maneuver had ended up fooling everyone. Long Chen then kicked away Kun Tu and grabbed his bloody wing happily, tossing it into the primal, chaos space. 
a pair of treasures that Kun Tu had yet to master now fell into Long Chen's hands. Long Chen, I curse you to have a terrible death. Kun Tu felt like his soul had been torn apart, and his face was twisted like that of a ghoul. Despite his powerful shout, having lost his wings, he was severely weakened, and a finger flick from Long Chen could crush him to death. So, even with all his fury, he didn't dare to attack Long Chen. I, on the other hand, wish you a long life of a hundred years, said Long Chen, smiling brightly at him. Long Chen's wings then flapped, and while everyone was still stunned, he rushed toward the hell flame barrier. Summon the fiend gates. The next moment, Devil Kai exploded and enormous gates broke out of the ground, completely blocking Long Chen's path. These gates had a fiendish mouth branded on them, with countless chains around the gates. It was like all these gates had something sealed behind them, something that would devour all life in this world if it was released. A total of nine gates had appeared in a row, blocking Long Chen. This was the unbreakable defense that the old devil experts had prepared for Long Chen. Cloud Dragon Immolation Claw. With a resounding roar, a dragon image appeared behind him, extending a dragon claw toward the gates. The next moment, the sharp claw tore through these nine fiendish gates like slicing tofu and struck the flame barrier. The flame barrier exploded. However, Long Chen was startled to find that despite the barrier being broken, the flames were still burning and the spatial gate in the sky only quivered ever so slightly. In an instant, Long Chen understood that the flames were immune to physical attacks. He then hastily told Huo Linger, gather the flames here. Huo Linger was in the midst of devouring the blue flame voracious wolf's power. But since Long Chen needed her, she stopped what she was doing and came out to help him. Huo Linger then transformed into a giant dragon, that charged into the barrier. When she opened her mouth, the black hell flames flowed into her body in thousands of streams. Just then, the Kunpeng Patriarch transformed into a giant Kunpeng and attacked Long Chen with his wings, which had runes flowing on top of them like stars. It was like an entire cosmos was crashing down on Long Chen. The Kunpeng Patriarch was a true three flower earth venerate and his three flowers were perfectly linked with the world, their power being able to swallow up all of heaven and earth. The Kunpeng Patriarch was now fully enraged. After all, just how prideful was the Kunpeng race? They even dared to challenge the dragon race, and the two factions had been fighting for countless years. The Kunpeng race stood as the only flying bird race capable of posing a significant threat to the true dragons. The Kunpeng race indeed had a shameful chapter in their history, but they were so prideful that they took their revenge on the true dragon race, devouring them just to wipe out the humiliation. So, when Kun Tu first targeted Long Chen, it was because of the true dragon essence blood in Long Chen's body. Although Long Chen was a human, that trace of true dragon aura destined them to be mortal enemies. Unfortunately for Kun Tu, he had repeatedly lost to Long Chen, a human. Perhaps if Long Chen was a true member of the true dragon race, the patriarch would be able to accept this. However, Long Chen was just a little human who had absorbed true dragon essence blood which meant an inferior race had actually beaten Kun Tu with just the power of the physical body and absolute disgrace for the Kunpeng race. Seeing that Kun Tu had lost his ability to keep fighting, the patriarch could only thicken his face and attack Long Chen despite being a senior. After beating the junior, the senior comes out. The Kunpeng race really is a shameful existence. No wonder you begged the dragon race for mercy back then. Long Chen sneered at him and didn't dodge. As his hand took the shape of a dragon claw, he raked the air. His blood, kite, bones, spirit, soul, and will merged. Normally, these powers would clash and weaken each other, but when faced with powerful enemies, 
an intriguing phenomenon occurred to the clashes strangely diminished it was akin to a group of people who were at odds with each other suddenly setting aside their differences and uniting against a powerful enemy all conflicts were put on hold as they joined forces and formed an alliance who a dragon claw and a kunpeng claw clashed the moment they met heaven and earth lost their original color after that one of those two claws rapidly grew until it devoured the entire world as a result a heaven-shaking explosion erupted and a terrifying power raged throughout this battlefield the impact of the strike tore apart the void sending astral winds flying and causing the earth to be completely deformed now the human settlement was nothing but a memory replaced by giant spatial cracks everywhere the kunpeng patriarch grunted and was sent flipping through the air he then furiously roared impossible even if you have a trace of true dragon essence blood you can't possess such power even the dragon kings of the true dragon race don't possess this power just who are you at this moment he was starting to question whether or not long chen was a human was he perhaps a disguised dragon expert just as he roared a figure silently slipped behind him wielding a saber that crashed down upon the root of his wings the next moment blood sprayed through the air as the patriarch roared in fury a deep cut was then left in the base of his wings after clashing with the kunpeng patriarch long chen almost coughed up blood but he knew that his enemy would also suffer so he had taken the risk to sneak attack the latter damn i didn't cut them off even with this even though the sneak attack had been pulled off in that state long chen's blood kai had yet to settle from the previous exchange so there was no way for him to unleash a full power attack in the end he only left a giant cut on the kunpeng patriarch's wings failing to cut them off you despicable bastard Thy! with a roar the kunpeng patriarch's wings lit up but just as he was about to blast long chen away long chen was already making his move he had been prepared from the moment he launched his sneak attack his left hand grabbed the patriarch's wing while some dark red powder appeared in his right hand the moment long chen placed this powder on the cut the patriarch's body shook and he let out a painful scream chapter four thousand thirty two fighting lio bent king dragon race how despicable you actually use such tricks roared the kunpeng patriarch this powder was the rust scraped from the chains of a ghost ship that long chen had daringly climbed and it contained the terrifying power of time even the kunpeng patriarch's powerful physical body could not resist the corrosion of time so the wound instantly rotted and spread feeling the pain the kunpeng patriarch roared and twisted trying to throw long chen off however instead of throwing him off long chen used the kunpeng patriarchy's twisting momentum to slash his other wing just like that long chen applied the rust powder to the other wound he then leisurely sneered first of all i'm not from the dragon race second of all in terms of despicableness who can compare to your kunpeng race you were the ones who surrendered and begged for mercy but then you schemed against the dragon race i'm simply returning the favor but even ignoring all that you a three flower earth venerate who has lived for countless years actually had the face to attack made someone in the initial immortal king realm did all your years of cultivation bow to thickening the skin of your face the kunpeng patriarch struggled crazily but was unable to throw off long chen it was like long chen was anchored to him and no matter what he did he was unable to throw long chen off the kunpeng patriarch finally began to grow worried even someone as powerful as him was pushed to the brink of death by long chen if this continued there was no way for him to heal his wounds stopping the corrosion of the rust was exhausting a huge amount of his core energy as a result he was growing weaker and weaker furthermore long chen was like a leopard eyeing its prey 
as soon as the Kunpeng patriarch revealed an opening, he would launch a fatal blow. Return to human form. How else are you going to throw him off? Countless experts shouted at the Kunpeng patriarch. They wanted to help, but they couldn't get close without being injured by his wild flailing. With that person's reminder, the Kunpeng patriarch shrank, taking human form. It was precisely at this instant that Long Chen forcibly tore off his wings, causing the Kunpeng patriarch to shriek once more. Aha, idiot! Transforming into human form severely limits your power. Did you think that you could protect this pair of wings in this state? Long Chen laughed. But suddenly, he put away his smile and apologized. Sorry, I was rude. You and Kun Tu are my precious clients. I shouldn't laugh at you, or I won't have any clients in the future. I will kill you. With a furious roar, a blood-red halberd appeared in his hands. Boom! In front of the Kunpeng Patriarch's attack, Long Chen simply swung his fist, and the Kunpeng Patriarch was knocked back three steps. As for Long Chen, his body merely swayed ever so slightly. Having lost your wings, it's like you've lost half of your cultivation base. What can you possibly rely on to act arrogantly? Your thick face that is stronger than city walls, sneered Long Chen. He didn't know if it was because of the true dragon essence blood flowing within his veins, but beating up the Kunpeng race brought him a great deal of pleasure. Suddenly, the space behind Long Chen trembled and a sword burst through, carrying a torrent of faith energy. Boom! Long Chen retaliated, swinging his fist once more, but his arm trembled with the impact. Agonizing pain then bloomed on his bleeding knuckles. Long Chen looked back. As expected, the attacker was the Nine Underworld Hall's Lio Benkang, who had a shocked expression now. His faith energy was supposed to be unstoppable. However, he barely broke Long Chen's skin with this attack, not even close to harming his bones. It seems that your true body has finally come. If I kill you this time... I will truly be a god slayer. Long Chen glared at Lio Benkeng darkly, his eyes full of icy killing intent. After all, the Nine Underworld Hall specialized in hunting down nine star heirs before they grew up. This act was akin to harming Long Chen's kin as he was one of them. Furthermore, back in the final battle of the Martial Heaven Continent, Long Chen almost died to the Nine Underworld Hall's experts. In that battle, far too many people had died, and it had brought him endless pain. Although Lord Brahma was the true master behind the scenes, Lyo Benkeng was the executioner who had carried out his orders. So, Long Chen would have his revenge today. Let's settle everything now. Long Chen eyed the spatial gate and then took a deep breath. With Huo Linger absorbing the hell flames, those dead spirits were no longer being burned, and so there was no longer as much resentment. As a result, the Hell Gate was unable to absorb enough energy to activate. Everything was still under control. With no immediate urgency to destroy the gate, Long Chen's priority shifted towards seeking revenge for the fallen Nine Star Heirs. Ignorant brat, who do you think you are? A god slayer. Keep dreaming. Lyo Benkeng sneered. The next moment, a god statue appeared behind him, enveloping him in holy light. Endless faith energy then flowed around him. Behind this giant statue were countless smaller statues. Every single statue was like a depository of faith energy, representing one of his inheritances. After all, the Nine Underworld Hall was spread throughout the Nine Heavens and Ten Lands. In the mortal world, it was unknown just how many followers they had, so their faith energy accumulated over countless years was unimaginable. This was the most terrifying point of god cultivators. They were gods that used the lives and faith of countless people to build up their position. As a result, the power of a god cultivator didn't solely stem from their realm or divine items. Instead, it derived from the abundance of faith energy they possessed. 
having summoned his original divine statue, Lyo Benkeng was mobilizing all of his faith energy, causing his art to ignite. Despite being only in the world king realm, his current aura was even more terrifying than the three flower earth venerate Kunpeng patriarchies. As long as my faith energy is not extinguished, my soul is eternal. You will never be able to kill me. I can easily crush a mortal like you, said Lyo Benking coldly. Oh, uh, then I want to test out if this so-called eternal existence really exists. Long Chen's blood suddenly began to circulate many times faster. Following that, the golden spherical runes in his body were awakened, letting Long Chen enter his strongest state. The endless power in his body threatened to erupt out of him. Long Chen then slowly reached back for the hilt of his saber. The moment Long Chen gripped the Menghong saber, killing intent as vast as a sea instantly locked onto Liao Benken, causing the world to become still. The saber was unsheathed with a soft sound, instantly drawing in all the murderous aura in the world without leaving a single trace behind. A giant saber image then tore through the wall of the heavens, slashing down on Liao Benking. Long Chen held nothing back with this attack. He only had one thought to kill Liao Benking. Chapter 4033 Supreme Dragon Might The entire world was cut apart by the saber, and even the starry sky above the nine heavens looked like a painting that had been slashed into two. This was not split the heavens nor any other techniques simply pure power. However, this one swing contained Long Chen's full heart and spirit, binding the corporeal and incorporeal power in his body together. It had already been a long time since he had used his saber. When this attack was unleashed, Long Chen instantly comprehended something. In truth, there was no need for him to meticulously control the merger of corporeal and incorporeal. He simply needed a merger point for the two powers, and this merger point was his saber. Although the dragon soul body forging art came from the dragon race, in Long Chen's hands it had been altered, so it could be considered Long Chen's unique divine ability. Long Chen had no dragon horns, but he did have his martial weapons. When yin and yang, movement and stillness, pure and impure merged into the saber, Everything became bright and clear. It couldn't be blamed on Long Chen for not thinking of this possibility. After all, the dragon race simply didn't use any weapons. Every part of their bodies was their strongest weapon. As a result, when the dragon expert transmitted the dragon soul body forging art, it also instilled the principle that the body was the strongest weapon. That was why Long Chen's thinking had been limited. Now that he used the Minghong saber, when his power merged into it, countless runes lit up. It didn't just illuminate this world in harsh light, but also illuminated Long Chen's path forward. The saber slashed down with unhurried grace, yet it gave the enemy no chance to dodge. This strike did not just lock down Liao Benkang, but also seemed to encompass all of heaven and earth, capable of destroying the entire world, including Liao Benking in it. In that instant, everyone felt a terrifying murderous aura lock onto them, and their hearts pounded in their ears. Using my name, I summon all lives. All lives are my power. All lives are mine. Liao Benking began to chant. As he did, the giant divine statue behind him lit up, and three flowers condensed on top of it. The countless small statues then sent threads of milky light into the main statue. He's gambling all of his faith energy. Has Lyo Benken really been forced to this extent by an immortal king? It had to be known that faith energy was terrifying, but once depleted, its replenishment was a slow and gradual process. Moreover, this accumulation was not something that could be done in just a few years or even decades. Rather, it required tens of millions of years of pure devotion. This was both the strong point of God cultivators and also their weakness. If they lacked faith energy, they would not be able to advance. 
Lyo Benkane was at the peak of the world king realm, merely a single step from being a divine venerate. According to normal standards, after a few more years, his faith energy would reach the absolute peak, and he would be able to advance. However, now that he was using up this much faith energy, even if he did kill Long Chen, his path to advancing had just stretched forward limitlessly. The price was steep. Thus, when they saw all of Lyo Ben Kang's statues light up, those divine venerates were shocked. It seemed that Long Chen's saber was even more terrifying than it appeared. Endless faith energy flowed on top of Lyo Ben Kang's sword. As it swung through the air, its divine light formed a crescent moon slash. Within that light, it was possible to see countless figures piously kneeling and praying. Those were Lyo Ben Kang's followers. After that, his sword sliced forward with unmatched divine might. I have billions and billions of followers. As for you, you are just a destitute brat with no background at all. What can you possibly use to fight me? roared Lyo Ben Kang. Lyo Ben Kang was furious and aggrieved, but Long Chen's saber was so powerful that it caused his golden fate lines to shake. This signified that the saber had the power to kill him, leaving him with no option but to unleash his full power. Lyo Ben Kang had been close to advancing to become a divine venerate, but this attack would set him back for an extra hundred years. I suppose all that you're capable of is conning a bunch of brainless fools. No matter how destitute I am, I would disdain doing that. Millions and billions of followers won't change your fate of being slain by me, said Long Chen. Boop! Saber and sword finally met. The moment they did, the laws of the world shattered, turning the originally clear world into a mass of chaos. The surrounding three flower earth venerates had long since summoned their defenses, but they were still blown back, their blood kai flipping inside of them. Some of their heads even cracked, and their yuan spirits were almost shaken to death. This was a world-shaking blow, one with enough power to throw the laws of the world into chaos. Hence, countless spatial cracks spread far and wide, looking like the gaping maws of monsters that wanted to devour this world. Power gushed out as their divine weapons locked against each other. Within this explosion of power, people saw Long Chen pressing down on Lyo Benkeng, their weapons quivering, roaring, and howling. What the people were shocked to see that even after using all of his faith energy, Lyo Benkeng was only capable of fighting evenly against Long Chen. No, it couldn't be considered even. That was because Long Chen was the one pressing down. As for the space behind Lyo Benken, it was constantly crumbling and collapsing. Long Chen had clearly taken the advantage. All the three flower earth venerates here had assumed that Lyo Benken's attack would kill Long Chen or at the very least leave him mortally wounded. They were well aware of just how terrifying faith energy could be. It was a power that caused despair. Even though they were three flower earth venerates, they all knew that once Lyo Benking went all out, they would not be able to stop him. However, Long Chen's saber was actually pressing down on him. This scene was unbelievable to them. Devoid of any technique, it was the most primitive clash of brute power. Who was strong and who was weaker was instantly revealed. As sword and saber clashed, they emitted ear-piercing explosive sounds and blinding sparks like stars exploding. One ripple after another spread from the epicenter. Those were ripples of death that scoured heaven and earth. At this moment, Long Chen's divine ring quivered. The giant dragon image inside of it raged and roared, unleashing endless power. Suddenly, the divine ring brightened and a majestic dragon cry rang out. This was a sound that blew apart clouds, a sound that could split rocks. It was different from the previous dragon cry as it seemed to come from an ancient world, having pierced through time immemorial to reach the present. Boom! The impact caused heaven and earth to tremble, 
while golden radiance bloomed. Lyo Benking suddenly coughed up blood, and his divine statues became covered in cracks. What? In that instant, countless people's eyes bulged in disbelief. Chapter 4034 Slaying Lyo Benkeng How was that possible? That was the first thought to flit through people's minds. Faith energy could only be exhausted, not beaten. After all, faith energy was a power that transcended the power of the heavenly Tao's. It was the mental energy of countless life forms, and it was unbreakable. It was precisely due to this that even three flower earth venerates felt trepidation toward Lyo Benken, a world king. This was the terrifying power of faith energy. However, Long Chen's power actually caused Lyo Benken's divine statues to crack. Such a thing completely surpassed their understanding. Impossible. He isn't from the dragon race. How can he possess such powerful sacred energy? The Kumpeng Patriarch's eyes were full of disbelief. Sacred energy was something that the Kumpeng race possessed as well. It was a power that the Kumpeng race had strived to snatch from the heavenly Tao's generation after generation. It could also be considered a power that exceeded the heavenly Tao's. Only a trace of sacred energy would be born in an expert's body after fighting against the heavenly Tao's and experiencing countless tribulations. This trace of sacred energy then slowly accumulated and was added to, creating a powerful inheritance for future generations. It could be said that sacred energy was a power for which innumerable generations of Kunpeng race experts had risked their very lives waging relentless battles against the heavens to claim its profound might. Other than the Kunpen race, there were many other races with sacred energy. They were unwilling to be limited by the heavenly Tao's and thus struggled against their shackles, slowly accumulating the sacred energy. However, only two races had the strongest sacred energy. One was the Kunpen race, while the other was the true dragon race. The true dragon race's sacred energy stood at the peak of the ten thousand races. It was due to this that they were the emperor of the beasts, their dragon might capable of suppressing all other beasts. Because the Kunpeng patriarch also possessed sacred energy, he could see through some clues. After all, only sacred energy could directly tear through faith energy. However, that was something impossible for him to accept. Long Chen's sacred energy was this terrifying. Although its aura was slightly weak, its strength was shocking. If the Kunpeng Patriarch's sacred energy could be likened to a large tree, then Long Chen's sacred energy was like a three-inch nail. Although it was smaller, its toughness was much greater. It directly clashed with Lyo Benkeng's faith energy and began to obliterate it. The most bewildering thing to the Kunpeng Patriarch was that Long Chen's sacred energy did not purely stem from the true dragon race, but also from himself. It was the merger of these two sacred energies that formed an unprecedented sacred energy. This completely toppled his understanding of sacred energy. Sacred energy was something gained through fighting against the heavenly Tao's, the privilege and authority grasped through surviving the heavenly tribulation. Other than that, it could only be accumulated through countless generations. Since that was the case, Long Chen was from the human race and had ascended from a lower plane, so there were definitely no sacred inheritances from his ancestors. Then just how did he come to gain sacred energy? While the Kunpeng patriarch was bewildered, Lyo Ben King's smaller statues were continuing to crack. Even his largest statue was starting to crack, looking like it might fall apart at any moment. Lyo Benken was filled with disbelief and terror now. He knew little about sacred energy, even less than the Kunpeng Patriarch, so he was even more bewildered about how Long Chen was doing this. His faith energy was supposed to be unrivaled. Help me, or you'll all die too. Lyo Benken suddenly roared. The moment he felt fear, a certain face entered his mind. That was the face of a fatty smiling sinisterly at him. Boom! 
Just as he roared, the countless smaller statues behind him exploded, signifying that Laio Benkain was now cut off from his followers. He could no longer absorb an unending stream of faith energy. As a result, Laio Benkain hacked up blood and his forehead split open. But then, through the crack in his forehead, a translucent arrow shot out toward Long Chen, splitting the mind. That's the power of a heaven venerate. The other experts rushed over. Seeing that Lyo Benkang was capable of unleashing a spiritual attack while striving to defend against Long Chen with his full power, they all jumped in shock. In that state, not even an earth venerate could do such a thing. If they were unleashing their full power to defend, their essence, Kai, and spirit had to be merged. To split one's attention, to launch another attack, was purely quickening their own death. However, Lyo Bentgang was capable of unleashing such an attack while still resisting Long Chen's attack. That meant that he had utilized some kind of special power. This power was called the mind in the dragon race. It had no name in the human race. Thus, it was simply said to be the power of a heaven venerate, as only heaven venerates were capable of controlling this incorporeal power. However, what was even more shocking was that, despite the appearance of this translucent arrow, Long Chen didn't attempt to dodge. Instead, that spiritual arrow simply exploded just before reaching his head. What? People were shocked to see a translucent shield appear in front of Long Chen's head and block Liao Benkang's attack. At this moment, the giant statue behind Liao Benkang cracked more and more, terrifying him. He tried to cry out for aid, but the moment he opened his mouth, violent pressure caused his body to explode. Attack! The Kunpeng Patriarch cried out. If they still didn't take action, Liao Benkang would be truly dead. If he died, who could stop Long Chen then? Dozens of three flower earth venerates from the Kunpeng race, the Old Devil race, the Blood race, the Underworld race, and others attacked. However, they didn't dare to approach Long Chen and simply launched long distance attacks. One attack after another tore through the air, containing their full power. They no longer even thought about holding back as Long Chen's power terrified them. Suddenly, another translucent barrier appeared around Long Chen. When they saw that, everyone's hearts shook. Was this a heaven venerate's power again? This time, there was no heaven-shaking explosion. The barrier around Long Chen simply twisted, and everyone's expressions changed. Not good. Our power. Long Chen coughed up blood, but Lyo Ben King didn't even make a sound. He simply exploded, his divine statue disintegrating, and his faith energy dissipating into nothingness. Long Chen, I won't let you off. Lyo Ben Kang's unwilling roar hung in the air. His physical body crumbled, and his Yuan spirit transformed into nothingness. However, his faith energy still hung in the air. As long as it wasn't completely destroyed, he would have a chance of condensing a new Yuan spirit. Just as all that faith energy was about to dissipate into heaven and earth, the world quivered. The spatial gate high in the sky slowly opened. Long Chen couldn't help being shocked when he saw that. How did the gates of hell suddenly open? A powerful suction force came out of the gate, sucking the faith energy inside of it. No, and Puda, you goddamn bastard. Lyo Benking's unwilling roar rang out from within that faith energy. No, this isn't the aura of hell. It's a trick. Long Chen's expression suddenly changed. Just then, the spatial gate lit up, and a pillar of light shot out of it toward a certain direction. That direction was the capital. Just then, Long Chen saw black flames appear above the capital. At that sight, Long Chen's soul suddenly quivered. A terrible feeling rose within him. That's the Yan Zhu flame. Their target is Kingshuan. Killing intent exploded out of Long Chen. Ignoring the people in front of him, he shot toward the capital. 
Chapter 4035 must kill Long Chen was now worried. He suddenly realized that this plot was not planned by the eight empires. This huge scheme definitely had Impuda behind it. Only Impuda would be so treacherous and capable of laying such a trap. Everything had been a preparation. Even the Nether River sacrificial ceremony was a cover. In order to achieve his goal, Impuda had not just called over the Kampeng race, all devil race, blood race, and netherworld race, but he had even dragged Liao Benkeng into it. When Long Chen killed Liao Benkeng, as long as the latter's faith energy remained, he could still be reborn. However, this time he was truly dead, not because of Long Chen's actions, but due to Imputa's cunning scheme. Imputa had craftily used Liao Benkeng's life as a stepping stone to set the foundation for an even grander scheme, one that was aimed directly at Yu Qingxuan. Learning of this, Long Chen's heart turned ice cold, but an overwhelming fury surged within him. The realization that even Liao Benkeng's death was part of Imputa's calculated plan demonstrated the sheer terror and complexity of this treacherous trap. Long Chen blamed himself. After cultivating the dragon soul body forging art, he got so confident that he neglected to consider this terrifying opponent. In Puda, this time I will not let you live any longer. Long Chen tore through the air, icy killing intent filling him. He knew that in Puda was truly frightening. In comparison, Io Benking was no match for him, neither in terms of power nor intelligence. The vast disparity between them was evident, as Lyo Benking wouldn't have fallen victim to impute schemes if he stood on the same level as this cunning adversary. This time, Long Chen was truly enraged. So, despite knowing that Imputa was terrifying and had definitely come amply prepared, Long Chen had made his determination. He had to kill this scourge. After all, Imputa had touched Long Chen's reverse scale daring to target Yu King Chuan. That made Long Chen crazy. Long Chen flew through the air, space twisting around him. It was like he was passing through a space-time channel, and he quickly arrived at the capital. The capital had lost its former brilliance. The runes on the buildings were dark and dim, akin to a city of death. Above the capital were two pitch-black spatial gates. One of them was emitting raging flames that could burn all things, to the point that even the laws of the heavenly Daos were set ablaze. Those black flames emitted terrifying divine might, and Long Chen instantly recognized its aura. It was the Yan Zhu flame, so this gate was the Yan Zhu gate. The other gate was darker and more sinister, filled with death kai. This was the gate that had a strange flower on it. Moreover, this peculiar flower possessed dozens of petals, each slender and elongated, resembling leaves yet not quite. Strangely, it did not entirely resemble a typical flower either. In its center, there were stamens that resembled the sinister eyes of a fiend, giving it an eerie and enigmatic aura. This flower was the red spider lily, also known as the legendary Paramita flower. It was said that when the Paramita flower appeared, the gates of hell would open. In other words, this gate was the true hell gate. Between the Yan Zhu gate and the hell gate was the vermilion bird capital. At this moment, Yu Ziyuan, Jiang Huixin, Zhu Lengxin, and countless other experts of the vermilion bird empire were gathered up in the air above the capital. They stared coldly at the endless sea of experts surrounding them. These experts included the Empire Lords of the Violet Thunderclap Empire, the Heavenly Ruler Seal Empire, and the Eastern Light Empire. There were hundreds of experts on the level of three flower earth venerates present. Amongst them, two in particular stood out. One of them was the Bloodkill Halls in Puda. As for the other one, he was the one that infuriated the Vermilion Bird Empire the most. Yu Kingshuan in particular was filled with disbelief when looking at him. Dong Feng Zichu, I treated you like a brother, and I entrusted my daughter to your teachings. Ha ha, I really never thought that I, Yu Zioyan, 
would be so blind. Yu Zioyan glared furiously at the man standing beside Imputa. This person was precisely the blazing heaven divine sect's master and Yu Zioyan's master, Dongfeng Zichu. No one had expected him to appear here and even stand on the side of Imputa and Wang Tebe. Jiang Huixin pointed her finger at Dongfeng Zichu, clenching her teeth furiously. Dongfeng Zichu, we entrusted you to seal the Nether Emperor's seal in King Shuan's body, but you were duping us the entire time. If you refused to help, why didn't you decline? Why did you make such a solemn oath? You made us part with our flesh and blood for so many years, and still destiny cannot be escaped. If we had known, we would have had King Shuan grow up with us. We would have seen her grow up. You, you are abominable. Even though she was the Empress, Jiang Huixin was too overwhelmed by emotion to care about decorum now. She was sobbing, and Yu Kingshuan held her. Looking from her enraged father to her heartbroken mother, Yu Kingshuan didn't even know what was going on. In front of their fury, Dong Feng Zichu indifferently said, My apologies. People are all ambitious. When you sent King Shuen over, I received a mission from the great Yan Zhu. Rather than wasting energy on the seal, it would be better for the Master of Destiny to awaken sooner. When King Uxin obtained the heavenly rainbow flame, my mission was complete. Just then, the nine heavens quivered and the void exploded. Killing intent filled this space, covering the heavens. It was as if the heavens were about to collapse. Within that furious killing intent, a roar rang out. In other words, in the heavenly flame world, when King Shuen was targeted by Yan Zhu's son, it was no coincidence but arranged by you. Following that, a vengeful and murderous Long Chen appeared in the air. His black hair and robes billowed around him, giving him the appearance of a furious killing god, ready to unleash his fury upon his foes. Long Chen. When Yu Qingxuan saw Long Chen, she could no longer hold back her tears. Her heart was kind, but that didn't mean that she was dumb. It was the opposite. She was exceptionally intelligent, and as soon as she heard their words, she knew the truth. Long Chen appeared in front of Yu Qingxuan. Just like that, in front of everyone, he tightly held her. Long Chen, how can this be? Yu Qingxuan wept in Long Chen's embrace, unable to accept this reality. Her beloved master had used her so that Yan Hong could absorb the heavenly rainbow flame. Seeing her crying like a child, Long Chen's heart was racked by sharp pain. His fury surged, and he turned to Dongfeng Zichu. His hatred toward Dongfeng Zichu might have even surpassed his hatred for Imputa at this moment. In front of that murderous gaze, Dong Fang Zichu merely smiled. I really didn't expect you to be able to kill Lyo Benkeng. But you didn't know that by killing Lyo Benkeng, you have also killed Yu Kingshuan, your beloved woman. My beloved woman will not die. As for you, you won't see tomorrow's sun. Long Chen spat out every word with power. Each word was like the hammer of a god striking this land to the point that it quivered. This was a challenge as well as an oath. Long Chen was determined to kill Dong Fang Zichu here. Chapter 4036 Exploding Killing Intent I really am shocked that you could kill Lyo Benkeng. Unfortunately, you are unable to escape whole master in Puda's plot. Dong Fang Zichu shook his head at Long Chen. What a... Both friends and foes stared in shock. Long Chen had killed Lyo Benkeng, the master of the Nine Underworld Hall, that Lyo Benkeng. He was an absolutely terrifying expert. Even though his realm was only at the peak of the World King realm, only a few three flower earth venerates were a match for him. Just defeating him alone was as difficult as ascending the heavens. As for actually killing him, no, they couldn't believe their ears. Long Chen didn't reply. In his fury, he no longer wished to speak. Instead, he was silently accumulating power and recovering. 
Long Chen had killed Liao Benkang, but the one to make sure that he stayed dead was in Puda, or perhaps it should be more appropriate to say that it was in Puda and Dong Fang Zichu. It was very clear that this plan was in Puda and Dong Fang Zichu's arrangement. Also, they were pushing the blame of Liao Benkang's death on Long Chen by saying this. However, Long Chen didn't mind as he didn't bother quibbling. He also knew that in Puda and Dongfeng Zichu were not attacking yet because they were waiting for the two gates to open. It just happened that Long Chen also needed to wait for his energy to recover. Time was favorable to him, but it was also favorable to his enemies. While waiting, Long Chen's murderous gaze was locked on to Dongfeng Zichu, and the latter actually felt a slight chill from it. However, he still indifferently said, originally, I felt that making such a huge plan was making a mountain out of a molehill. However, it seems that the one to understand you the best is Hall Master in Pudo. By killing Lyo Benking, you ruined the equilibrium of the Netherworld's gate. As a result, all that energy was absorbed by the Hell Gate here. You have quickened the opening of the Hell Gate. When this gate opens, my beloved disciple will forever leave this world. Just thinking about it hurts my heart. After all, I was the one who raised King Shu and shut your fucking mouth. Long Chen unleashed a heaven-shaking roar. It was evident that Dong Feng Zichu purposely brought up Yu King Shu to provoke him. In an instant, Long Chen's demeanor shifted, resembling that of a wild and untamed beast. Ha ha ha! There's no need to be so angry. Do you know? King Shuan's life was destined to be bitter. When she was born, she carried the rune of the flower of hell on the sole of her foot. Do you know what that means? I'll tell you. It is the mark of the Nether Emperor's woman. Do you know who the Nether Emperor is? That is a supreme existence of the Netherworld. In front of him, we aren't even ants. At most, we can be considered specks of dust. I cultivate the blazing heaven art, and I conceal the hell flower. While it wouldn't be sealed completely, it would extend the time required for the hell flower to bloom. When His Majesty Yu Zioyan came to find me, he promised me many benefits, including a drop of incomparably precious, immemorial vermilion bird essence blood. But no matter how precious that essence blood was, it cannot compare to the benefits that Master Yan Zhu promised me. As a result, I accepted his gifts as well as Master Yan Zhu's promise. But I didn't act according to the agreement. I didn't seal the hell flower and used its characteristics to help her cultivate faster, raising her realm, gathering all kinds of flame energy to awaken her core flame, and letting her obtain the heavenly rainbow flame as quickly as possible. That way I could complete my mission this fast, explained Dongfeng Zichu casually. Dongfeng Zichu, you petty little person, roared Yu Zioyan furiously. Petty little person? I suppose. In the cultivation world, who doesn't exist for profit? In the heavenly flame world, my mission should have been complete. However, Long Chen appeared midway and killed Yan Ha. Back then, I had no way to contact Master Yan Zhu. I then waited and waited, and just a month ago, I received word that I could hand King Shuan over. At this time, Hall Master in Puda found me and told me about the situation in the Vermilion Bird Empire. Then we came up with such a plan. Just like Hall Master in Puda, I like to be sure and prepared for my affairs. Last time, Although it was an unexpected accident, Master Yan Zhu was definitely unhappy with it. Therefore, this time I opened the Yan Zhu gate here and you are present as well. All enmities and grudges can be settled now. That way, Master Yan Zhu's rage won't be cast on me. It really is a double win, said Dong Feng Zichu with a smile. Master, I always viewed you just like a father. I memorized all your teachings. Can you tell me that this is all a lie, that this world isn't so cruel? Yu Kingshuan suddenly looked at Dong Feng Zichu beseechingly. In Yu Kingshuan's heart, Dong Feng Zichu was a kind and gentle master, 
always treating her well and looking after her. Because her mother and father weren't by her side, she had viewed him as her father. However, today, this respected master of hers had become a devil who lied about everything to her. He used her, offering her to Yan Zhu. She felt like she had suddenly descended into a nightmare. Her face was streaked with tears. It appeared incredibly pitiable, incredibly powerless. Just looking at her crying like that cut Long Chen's heart in pieces. He knew that in this world, the most painful thing was not the pain of the physical body, nor was it the pain of the soul. It was the pain of betrayal, especially the betrayal of the person that you trusted the most. It was enough to make people wish to die. Long Chen clenched his teeth so hard that they creaked. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to share the burden of Yu Qingchuan's pain. Thus, Long Chen's hatred for Dong Fang Zichu deepened. Showing no hint of guilt, Dong Fang Zichu disdainfully smiled. As master and disciple, I'll give you another lesson. If you are tricked, it only means that you are foolish. Other than that, crying is the display of the foolish and weak. Emotions are the most useless things in this world. If you want to get stronger, you have to use any means necessary, and you have to stop at nothing. From the day that your father and mother sent you to me, you already became my stepping stone to higher realms, that's enough. Long Chen roared, interrupting Dong Fang Zichu. The reason people are better than animals is because they have emotions. Someone as foolish as you is a sect master. You have the face to give teachings when you are so shameless. Can it be that when your father and mother birthed you, it was just for copulation? Is that why they birthed such a cold-blooded snake? However, Dong Feng Zichu didn't get angry at all. He still smiled. Keep cursing me if you please. You won't get another chance to in a bit. You have already died, so I have no anger for you, only sympathy. Sympathy. No, I will teach you what fear is, what the price of harming my woman is. Long Chen turned to the tear street to Yu Qingxuan and gently wiped away those tears. Don't worry. Even if this world betrays you, I am still here. I am willing to fight this entire world for you. Dong Feng Zichu sneered, indifferently, saying, When a man is about to die, they talk softly. When a bird is about to die, they cry out mournfully, you are the one about to die, but so what? Long Chen suddenly let go of Yu Qingxuan and walked toward Dong Feng Zichu. Every step he took caused the void to quiver. As golden dragon scales slowly appeared on his body, his aura crazily grew. In an awe-inspiring display, a majestic dragon's roar resounded throughout heaven and earth. Long Chen's hand then reached back to grasp the hilt of his saber, exuding a terrifying killing intent that made even the heavens tremble, in fear. Dong Feng Zichu, today either you die or I die. In front of countless shocked gazes, Long Chen shot toward Dong Feng Zichu like a grim reaper. Chapter 4037 What if you add me? Long Chen bit back. Dong Feng Zichu is mine. Yu Ziyuan roared, about to grab Long Chen. He could tell that Long Chen had just fought an exhausting battle. He might not have seen how Long Chen had killed Liao Benkang, but he knew that doing so had to have come at an immense price. If Long Chen were to fight Dong Feng Zichu in this state, he would probably be killed in just a few moves. After all, Yu Ziyuan was well aware of just how terrifying Dong Feng Zichu was. Yu Ziyuan had never liked Long Chen. One reason was that he disliked Long Chen's character. But the other reason was that, based on their calculations, Yu Qingxuan's nether emperor seal would soon erupt. They were hoping to accompany her for her final moments. That was why amongst all the princes and princesses, Yu Qingxuan alone had free reign to stay in the imperial palace at all times. Yu Ziyuan and Jiang Huixin only hoped to spend a bit more time with her in her final days. For Long Chen to come at this time to take Yu Qingxuan, it revealed that a father's love was selfish and a mother's love was giving. 
Yu Ziyuan didn't want anyone to take Yu Qingxuan from him, but Zhang Huixin was of the opposite opinion. Even if that meant that they wouldn't have much time together as a family, she still hoped for her daughter to experience true love. But now, things had progressed to this point. Because of his feelings for Yu Qingxuan, Long Chen was willing to risk his life for her family's empire. Furthermore, even in front of the likes of Dong Feng Zichu, and Puda, Wang Tebei, and countless powerful experts, Long Chen still didn't retreat. His unyielding determination and the killing intent he exuded served as undeniable proof of his deep affection for Yu Qingxuan. Thus, when Long Chen wanted to fight Dong Feng Zichu, Yu Ziyuan immediately stepped forward. At this moment, he had clearly accepted Long Chen as his son-in-law. You are all too naive. You don't even realize that you are tortoises caught in a jar. Yu Ziyuan, we once called each other brother. So I'd advise you not to struggle. Struggling will only bring you more pain. Dong Feng Zichu suddenly flicked his finger, and flames shot toward the Yanzu gate. As a result, the Yanzu gate quivered, and countless black runes lit up on it. Uh, when those black runes lit up, Yu Qingxuan turned as pale as paper, her body quivering. Somehow, her flame energy rapidly flowed out of her, and even her core flame wanted to leave her body. Summon the Vermilion Bird Heaven Screening Barrier. As Yu Ziyuan roared, the Imperial City's grand formation covered them, and a giant vermilion bird soared into the air above the capital, enveloping the entire capital with sacred aura. However, the black runes on the Yanzu gate spread like tentacles, pressing on the barrier. The two sides began to clash. What shocked you, Zioan, and the others, was that the barrier was slowly caving in. It seemed that it could not stop the invasion of those black flames. It is useless. These flames are connected to the Yanzu world. They possess the specific laws of the Yanzu world, so they cannot be absorbed or stopped. You can only accept it, said Dong Feng Zichu indifferently. All of a sudden, Yu Ziyuan formed some mystical hand seals, causing the vermilion bird's divine seal to light up on his forehead. As he channeled his inner power, a surge of blood-red flames erupted from his body, infusing the barrier with even greater strength and intensity. Imperial father, don't. When Yu Qingxuan saw this, she couldn't help crying out. Yu Ziyuan was actually igniting his essence blood. When Jiang Huixin, Zhu Langxin, and the other senior experts saw this, they also followed his lead. Then Zhu Yunwen, Zhu Yifen, Yu Kaingxu, the other princes and princesses, and all the people of the imperial family began to ignite their essence blood to support the barrier. With everyone's support, the vermilion bird barrier lit up with divine light, forcing back those black tentacles that had been about to reach Yu Qingxuan. No, don't do this for me. But Yu Qingxuan was sobbing. So many people were burning their essence blood for her causing her to feel moved, but also terrible. King Shuen, your father and mother have let you down. We trusted the wrong person and couldn't see you grow up. But don't worry, even if we have to throw our lives away, we will protect you. Yu Ziyuan looked back at her with love. Dad, perhaps in this world, calling a father dad was the most common thing but it was Yu Ziyuan's first time hearing it. Compared to Imperial Father, he preferred it better, so a gratified smile appeared on his face. Just as the Yanzu gate's runes lit up, and Long Chan was wondering if he should attack the Yanzu gate or Dong Feng Zichu first, Kyuo Linger said something to him. He was disappointed to find that the Yanzu flame here was not a true flame, but was closer to a law, so she could not absorb it. With everyone igniting their essence blood, Yu Qingxuan was temporarily protected. Long Chen then took a deep breath and stopped hesitating. With a single step, his saber came out of its sheath and attacked Dong Feng Zichu. Boom! 
With a heaven-shaking explosion, Long Chan was blown back wretchedly, coughing up blood. Despicable! Yu Ziyuan thundered with indignation. Just as Long Chan attacked, Dong Feng Sichu, Impuda, Wang Tebe, and dozens of other experts converged on him at the same time. Thus, Long Chan had essentially fought all of them at once. So many three flower experts joined forces against a single immortal king at once. That was practically the pinnacle of shamelessness. A man of character fights with wits, not power. In this world, it is the victor who is respected. As for shamelessness, it means nothing in front of victory. So what if we are despicable? So what if we are shameless? A group of dead people can't say anything, sneered Dong Feng Zichu. When it came to using everyone's power to attack Long Chen, he didn't seem the slightest bit ashamed. Instead, he simply put on a contemptuous expression. Long Chen, don't fight them. Return to the barrier. We have the protection of the immemorial heroic spirit here. At least temporarily, they cannot touch us. Don't be brash, shouted Yu Ziyuan. Even the always brash Yu Ziyuan could see that Dong Feng Zichu and Imputa's trap was meticulously planned, with every step leading to the next. They simply used the Yan Zhu gate to deal with all of them, while they dealt with Long Chen. If Long Chen and the others allowed things to go according to their rhythm, they would have no chance to retaliate. So, they had to think of a way to break free of the trap first. Long Chen felt his blood kai churn violently within him, still reeling from the impact of the last blow. At this moment, his fury and killing intent were out of control. He knew just how terrifying of a schemer in Puda was, so thinking of a way out was meaningless at this time. He realized that brute force was his only option. Long Chen wiped some blood off the corner of his mouth and took a deep breath, with no time for probing blows and no exploitable weaknesses to capitalize on, Long Chen realized that what he needed was now absolute sheer power. After slowly sheathing the Ming-Ong saber, in an instant, the world lost all sound. Within this deathly silence, horrifying killing intent began to condense. Everyone could tell that Long Chen was accumulating power, his next attack would be thunderous, a truly suicidal attack, where life and death hung by a single thread. Seeing this scene, the silent Imputa smiled and finally spoke. Do you feel like you can deal with all of us on your own? Then what if you add me? Just then, an icy voice rang out, and a dainty figure slowly appeared within a twisted space. There's also us... In the distance, space collapsed, and a group of figures appeared with overwhelming battle intent, their sharp blades unshaped. Chapter 4038 Unrivaled Dong Minju Boss, we came late. The group to come was led by Guo Ran and Xia Chen, and they had over 400 dragon blood warriors with them. During this time, Long Chen had left a mission for the two of them, to gather all the dragonblood warriors in the violet flame heaven. When the dragonblood warriors gathered in the three thousand worlds, Xia Chen and Guo Ran noted that over three hundred of them actually came from the violet flame heaven. Since they knew where their sects and locations were, they reunited directly. However, even if the two of them knew where they were, most of them were still scattered throughout every corner of the land. Thus, it took all this time just to find 430 dragonblood warriors. Perhaps there were still a few other dragonblood warriors left in the violet flame heaven. But the violet flame heaven was enormous, so in the end, they could only settle for gathering this many. After gathering the dragonblood warriors, Guo Ran and Xiaochen distributed the heavenly Tao fruit to them as well as the dragon blood that they had gathered in the three thousand worlds so that they could condense new dragon blood battle armors. As a result, all of their powers grew explosively. Thus, they spent some time drilling to get used to their new power, and after making sure that there were no problems, they rushed over to where Long Chen was. 
Long Chen had told them not to rush. After all, he had only come to get a wife. Hence, they hadn't rushed and only managed to arrive at the Vermilion Bird Empire at this time. Fortunately, on their way here, they had heard that the Vermilion Bird Empire was under attack, so they immediately rushed over at full speed. Yuo Ran and the others had come, and so was Dong Minjiu, causing Long Chen's heart to warm up. No, you didn't come late. You came right on time. Long Chen was moved. Just now, he had made his determination to fight to the death, but the other side had so many terrifying experts, including two unfathomable existences in the form of Don Feng Zichu and in Puda, so he had no assurance to win at all. However, their arrival revitalized him. As for the Vermilion Bird Empire's people, they were shocked. These people were all immortal kings, yet their auras were frighteningly sharp. Among them, Dong Minjiu appeared ethereal and elusive, to the point where even Yu Zioyan couldn't sense her presence despite standing right before him. She seemed like a phantom, shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Big Brother Long Chen, I have an agreement with my master to take in Puda's head. Leave him to me, said Dong Minjiu. Long Chen's heart shook. Are you sure? Dong Minjiu turned to look at him and smiled. Don't worry. I will use my power to prove that I can protect you. Suddenly, in Puda stabbed his dagger through the air, parrying another dagger that materialized in midair, causing sparks to fly. After that, Dong Minjiu's figure somehow appeared in front of Impuda. This scene made everyone jump. Dong Minjiu had clearly been near Long Chen. How did she suddenly appear in front of Impuda? When they looked at the Dong Minjiu by Long Chen again, they saw her figure slowly fading away. It was nothing more than an afterimage. What speed! Even three flower earth venerates quivered. If they were to fight someone with that speed, by the time they reacted, their head would already be on the ground. Imputa shook his head at Dong Minju with their daggers crossed. You were once my follower, and I have always been waiting for your return. However, you aren't a match for me. I don't want to kill you so you can leave. Connor, you lie to so many people that you've convinced yourself of your own lies. You brought me into the darkness, and it was big brother Long Chen who brought me back to the light, making me no longer a cold killing machine, said Dong Minjiu indifferently. If that's the case, you have yet to comprehend the true essence of killing. To have pity but be pitiless, to have a heart but be heartless, killing is the law of the survival of the fittest. With our hands, we are simply taking the place of the heavenly dows to cleanse this world. Killing shows you what reverence is. Only with reverence can this world have order, and only with order can this world function properly. So, an assassin is an envoy that walks the line between light and dark, carrying out a heavenly mission to be the natural selector of this world. Laws are naturally heartless, when have the heavenly Daos ever pitied the weak? said Imputa. Don Minjiu smiled. If you are carrying out a heavenly mission, why do you need to take so much money? Are you sure that you're carrying out the mission of the heavenly Daos, not the mission of making money? What a fake pretense. You lie under the title of a god, and you always have endless excuses and reasons. No wonder you are called the despicable killing god. But no matter how despicable you are, your lies are useless. I have seen your true face. You destroyed my younger years, and I will destroy your later years. That is the true heavenly Daos. Dong Minjiu suddenly vanished. In that instant, Imputa's expression completely changed. His fat figure swayed, and he vanished as well. The moment Imputa vanished, Dong Feng Zichu also moved, looking like a fleeing rabbit. Just as they flew away, the tiniest black dot appeared in the space where Dong Minju had been. That black dot suddenly grew in every direction, devouring all the nearby space. 
and Puda and Dong Feng Zichu were the first to run, but their comrades did not. Over ten people were too slow to react, and were touched by that black hole. The moment that happened, they turned into black dust. To everyone's astonishment, they didn't even get a chance to scream or utter a sound. They simply vanished, dissipating into nothingness with even their Yuan spirits unable to escape. That is, upon seeing this scene, Long Chen's heart shook. That was Dong Minju's manifestation. He had seen it once in the Three Thousand Worlds. Back then, her manifestation was nothing more than some support that gave her some dark energy. But now, it had become a substantial law, something that could not be resisted even by three flower earth venerates. It was a power that Long Chen had yet to come into contact with. The black hole vanished as if it had never appeared. In the same fashion, over ten three flower earth venerates would never appear again. That bizarre sight horrified countless people. After all, this was an unknown power, one that they couldn't resist. Boom! Suddenly, the void exploded, and with a roar, Imputa's divine statue appeared behind him, causing milky white light to envelop him. Similar to Lyo Benking, countless tiny statues appeared behind Imputa's large statue. But in terms of number, he possessed over ten times more statues than Lyo Benking. Just from this, everyone could see that Imputa's true power was not something that Lyo Benking could compare to. When Lyo Benking and Imputa had fought in the past, Imputa had always restrained himself. That caused people to assume that the two were equally matched. But in truth, there was a huge difference. Oh, suddenly, the black hole appeared once more and smashed into Imputa's faith domain. The clash of these two kinds of power emitted heaven-shaking explosive sounds. Following that, they saw Dong Menju appear like a phantom within that darkness. She attacked Imputa directly. Their figures once more vanished, and people could only see black and white repeatedly clashing like two worlds competing. Dragon blood crossed slash. Just as everyone's attention was drawn by Dong Minjiu, Guo Ren took the chance to cross his sabers in front of him. After that, an enormous attack shot out. Chapter 4039 Four Forms Superimposed Boom! A giant cross-shaped slash pierced through the earth. Before the enemies could recover from their shock after seeing Dong Minjiu's attacks, they were struck by that cross. Guo Ran's timing was impeccable. He had stored up energy silently, and when he finally unleashed his stored power, it caught his enemies off guard, leaving them with no chance to defend themselves. The sheer force of his attack caused the earth to collapse beneath their feet, and a tremendous wave of earth soared into the air, making the entire capital tremble. The experts within the city were all shaken by the immense display of power. Hundreds of three flower earth venerates were struck by his attack. Caught off guard, the majority didn't even have time to summon any defenses. At the center of the cross, a hundred experts were slain. There were also many whose physical bodies crumbled, leaving behind only their Yuan spirits. What a despicable sneak attack! You goddamn bastards! roared one of those Yuan spirits. Boom. He had just roared when a talisman flew out and detonated his Yuan spirit. Consequently, screams filled the air as the talisman detonated, shattering into golden fragments that rained down upon the battlefield. Upon contact with any Yuan spirit, the fragments elicited agonizing cries and black smoke emanated from them kill. Equipped to his teeth, Guo Ran took the vanguard position, leading the attack on those earth venerates. Kill! The dragon blood warriors also roared, summoning their dragon blood battle armor and attacking. When they charged over, dragon cries echoed each other with overflowing killing intent. Even against three flower earth venerates, the dragon blood warriors showed no fear. They directly went into their killing formation. Great immemorial lightning beast, please enjoy your offerings. 
Wang Teve form hand seals, summoning the immemorial lightning beast. As soon as the beast materialized, it wasted no time and immediately opened its colossal maw, releasing a lightning sword with a thunderous crackle. However, to everyone's astonishment, the lightning sword pierced Wang Teve through the back. His eyes widened like saucers, filled with disbelief as he turned to look back at the source of the attack. The immemorial lightning beast then transformed into a lightning dragon. With a strike of its claws, Wang Tebei's body exploded. That was no immemorial lightning beast, but Lei Linger. She had long since absorbed the lightning beast and gained all its power. After killing Wang Tebei, Lei Linger roared and attacked the other ancient beasts. At this moment, the experts of the various empires had also summoned their immemorial heroic spirits. In the form of a giant lightning beast, Lei Linger tore through their ranks. As a result, chaos reigned. Both friends and foes stared at the scene before them in dumbfounded silence, not knowing what was going on. Lei Linger was incredibly powerful and possessed an immemorial aura now. Like an ancient divine beast, she was unstoppable. With a swing of her tail, one of her opponents was directly blasted apart. On her own, Lei Linger was crushing multiple immemorial beasts. This sudden change left the other side completely flabbergasted. At this time, Long Chen caught up to Dong Feng Zichu and directly unleashed his full power. As the Minghong saber tore through the heavens, terrifying killing intent locked onto Dong Feng Zichu. This was a person that Long Chen hated to the bone. After all, he was the one who had hurt Yu Qingxun. In front of Long Chen's attack, Dong Feng Zichu's indifferent expression instantly became serious. After that, a statue appeared behind him. What no one had expected was that Dong Feng Zichu was actually a god cultivator. Moreover, the scale of his faith energy appeared to be on par with that of Enkuda, and it flooded this space. It doesn't matter how strong you are. You will only be able to watch as your beloved woman dies a miserable death. Dong Feng Zichu slowly raised his sword. Faith energy then poured into his sword, unleashing a brilliant divine light. Your mouth really is hateful. Long Chen slashed the Ming Ong saber down. Boom. With an explosive sound, Long Chen was sent flying, tumbling through the air. Startled cries rang out from the experts of the Vermilion Bird Empire. Dong Feng Zichu was so powerful that Long Chen was actually at an immense disadvantage. Yu Qingxuan felt the worst. She wanted to call Long Chen back, but she knew that no one could change what Long Chen had decided. Even if she did call out to him, she knew that he wouldn't stop. Instead, it would only disturb his Tao heart. Yu Ziyuan was panicking as even he was deceived. He had always thought that Don Feng Zichu was an immortal cultivator, never suspecting that the latter possessed such awe-inspiring and terrifying faith energy. Don Feng Zichu was about to sneer at Long Chen when unexpectedly, Long Chen spun through the air and came charging back, his second attack slashing down. Furthermore, this attack contained the divine might of the previous attack. Boom! Long Chen was once more blown back. But this time, Dong Feng Zichu was also forced back a few steps before managing to stabilize himself, causing his expression to change. He saw that Long Chen's saber had divine might circling it, and vast energy poured into it repeatedly. This time, Dong Feng Zichu didn't wait and attacked first. He could see that with every blow, Long Chen's saber was accumulating the power of the previous attack. If he simply allowed Long Chen to continue, the consequences would be terrible. Oh. The clash of sword and saber resounded with a metallic ring as both Long Chen and Dong Feng Zichu were blown back. Despite being the aggressor this time, Dong Feng Zichu was unable to halt Long Chen's momentum. Long Chen's saber crazily flickered, and he stood in the sky, pointing his saber at the dome of the heavens. At the same time, 
Long Chen's bold and dragon scales were shining, its light flowing into the Minghong saber. The next moment, the Minghong saber rumbled and cracks weaved through the sky. Even before the saber slashed down, an ear piercing sound already shook people's souls. Suppressing the laws of the heavenly Daos, how does he possess such power? Yu Ziyuan and the others were stunned. This was a power that only heaven venerates should possess. Split the heavens for. Long Chen let out a roar. When the saber finally fell, it was vaguely possible to see a giant figure holding a saber up above the dome of the heavens. The giant then followed Long Chen's actions, slashing the saber down on Dong Fang Zichu. Seeing such power, Dong Fang Zichu was completely terrified and roared. Boom! The millions of statues behind Dong Fang Zichu exploded, yet they weren't destroyed by the impact. No, Dong Fang Zichu had detonated them himself. As they exploded, their faith energy poured into his sword, infusing it with immense power. Dong Feng Zichu's ruthlessness was evident he was willing to sacrifice the very foundation of his strength by destroying his own statues to extract every ounce of power available. It was a costly loss, but he resorted to such extreme measures to counter Long Chen's formidable attack. The heavenly saber slashed down. In front of countless horrified gazes, it struck Don Fang Zichu's sword, which was filled with his faith energy. Chapter 4040 Retribution Comes Boom! A powerful explosion shook the world, exuding streaks of golden divine radiance and white faith energy that tore through the world. As a result, countless fragments of the Grand Dao spun through the air, and the void was riddled with holes. Within that devastation, Long Chen's body was covered in cracks as he hacked up blood. However, Dong Feng Zichu was no better off. His sword was crushed by the impact, and its fragments turned him into a sieve. Dong Feng Zichu was heavily injured at this moment. However, his gaze was still as sharp as a sword. I thought that I had given you a high estimation, but I didn't expect you to be able to injure me. Even so, it won't change your fate. Dong Feng Zichu formed hand seals, and the Yan Zhu gate quivered. Two currents of divine light then flowed into Dong Feng Zichu. The power of Yan Zhu destroys all creation. Let's see what you can use to block this. The Yan Zhu gate behind Dong Feng Zichu actually heard his summons and lent him power. Dong Feng Zichu's milky white faith energy vanished as he was surrounded by black flames, looking like a devil came from hell. He then shot at Long Chen. Long Chen had been blown back in that last exchange. On the surface, it appeared as if they were both severely injured. But in truth, the one to suffer was Dong Feng Zichu. Long Chen's wounds had only been superficial, and a single breath later, his wounds already healed. With the life energy of the moon trees and fusing trees, Long Chen was not afraid of being injured, even if his opponent used faith energy. However, Dong Fang Zichu was truly crafty. With his backup plan, he used the power of the Yan Zhu gate to fight Long Chen. The Yan Zhu energy? Is that so amazing? In front of absolute power, it's just a joke. Long Chen snorted and surprisingly put away the Ming-Ong saber. In the distance, Lei Linger displayed her prowess, swiftly slaughtering the opposing immemorial beasts. In the blink of an eye, she appeared on top of Long Chen's hand, as if effortlessly teleporting. Then, a magnificent flame dragon manifested on one of Long Chen's hands, while a majestic lightning dragon appeared on the other. As the two dragons elegantly coiled around his hands, the very heavens seemed to shift and transform. An ominous, apocalyptic aura then radiated from his palms, signaling the immense power he now possessed. What? Dong Feng Zichu had not expected Long Chen to possess another trump card, one even stronger than the last one. His expression changed, but he couldn't stop his momentum anymore. So, he could only risk it all. Don't hold back. 
Kill him. Double dragon destruction. Long Chen roared, sending his full spiritual strength into Huo Linger and Lei Linger. At this moment, the two dragons were no longer their old selves. Their power had grown by over ten times, so unleashing the full double dragon destruction now exhausted a terrifying amount of spiritual strength. However, Long Chen didn't mind. He wanted Dong Feng Zichu dead and would pay any price to make sure that bastard stayed dead. The Yan Zhu flame is the strongest flame of the nine heavens and ten lands. The person to die will be you. Dong Feng Zichu roared, pouring all of his power into his fist. Without any path of retreat anymore, as retreat signified definite death, he could only gamble it all in re calm in front of countless horrified gazes, the two dragons coiling around Long Chen's hand shot out like a sharp nail toward a fist covered in flames. Both, as multicolored divine radiance illuminated the world and a giant mushroom cloud covered the dome of the sky, people lost their vision, their scent, their taste, their hearing, and their sense of touch. Even three flower earth venerates felt their heads turn white. It was like time was standing still, yet also like thousands of years were passing by in the blink of an eye. The scene before them seemed to stretch into eternity, akin to being lost in the depths of primal chaos. Time itself appeared to stand still, leaving them uncertain of how long they had been trapped in this surreal state. Yet, eventually, their vision shifted, and time began to flow once more. The chaotic landscape gave way to the familiar sight of the battlefield Long Chen was covered in blood and still in his attacking posture. As for the Dong Feng Zichu in front of him, he was gone, turned into a bloody mist, but his aura still hung in the air. Suddenly, Long Chen moved, shooting out in a certain direction. Looking in that direction, people saw a translucent figure. It's Dong Feng Zichu's Yuan spirit. Dong Feng Zichu's body was destroyed, but he had managed to preserve his Yuan spirit. It was just that his Yuan spirit was incredibly weak, seeming like it might dissipate at any moment. Long Chen, you destroyed my physical body and the foundation of my faith. I swear that you will pay the price, howled Dong Feng Zichu's Yuan spirit hatefully. Long Chen unleashed a punch, but unexpectedly, his fist simply passed through Dong Feng Zichu's Yuan spirit. Long Chen suddenly raised his head. Upon seeing the figure behind Dong Feng Zichu, killing intent exploded out of him. Lord Brahma. At some unknown point, an illusory image had appeared behind Dong Feng Zichu. It was as light as mist and too vague to see who it was. However, Long Chen instantly recognized him. At that moment, he instantly understood why Imputa would join forces with Dong Feng Zichu. They were all Lord Brahma's subordinates. With the protection of Lord Brahma's faith energy, I have an undying body. No one can kill me. Did you think that you could kill me just because you could kill Lyo Benkeng? Keep dreaming. It was only because Lyo Benkeng Dong Feng Zichu suddenly shut his mouth and changed the subject. Long Chen, I'll patiently enjoy watching you suffer as King Shuin is killed, ha ha ha. Dong Fang Zichu laughed crazily. That laughter was filled with so much rancor that it made people's hair stand on end. Long Chen repeatedly attacked, but they all passed through Dong Fang Zichu's spirit. It was like he was just a projection. Fool. Idiot. Release me. I'll kill him. Just then... Within Long Chen's mind, see, his heart devil's roar rang out. His heart devil was actually capable of speaking to him. Can Lord Brahma guarantee your protection? Not necessarily. Just then, a clear, icy voice rang out. It wasn't loud, but it still entered every single person's ears crystal clear over the ruckus of the battlefield. An icy streak of light then flew through the air, seemingly slicing through the world itself. The severance point was precisely the space between Dong Feng Zichu and Lord Brahma's figure. Seeing that, Long Chen didn't bother asking who that was. Turning his fist into a claw, 
he hacked down on Dong Feng Zichu. Boop! The void was torn apart. Dong Feng Zichu's Yuan spirit was now in Long Chen's hand. Dong Feng Zichu, your retribution has come. Long Chen's gaze was frightening. A lightning needle appeared in his hand, and he stabbed it into Dong Feng Zichu's Yuan spirit.